to, to throw the acorn shot just to make sure he can plant the tree and, and continue to lock down uh, the uh, ramps for Samaras. Although, you know, maybe the fight looks different. Maybe Navi decide not to fight if the arena never comes out. Dota's a weird game like that, especially when uh, it comes down to team fights and, and, and who is making the shots, or who's calling the shots, I should say. Uh, Spittoon, though, now that uh, he's throwing out plenty of shots with the flat cannon, it's going to be life stealing plenty off of Loki as they can accomplish what's completed. Number four, but you get uh, the first power rune at six and one every two minutes in that. And Press Kid grinding four of them that are uh, CDs, which is uh, pretty nice for him. I'm sure he'll take more of these, especially with now the casual crystal is finished up. As Holy say, shit. Alright, I actually completely missed this game. Um, it was playing during the day, but CIS Dota is like so fucking good, dude. Yeah, this Lena has actually been showing up a lot in the qualifiers. I feel like she's actually kind of busted, like especially in this meta that's all about like healing and shit. Um, Lita's just one of those heroes that really stands out to me. You get boots of trap. She behaves like all the Shrek, except she can actually burst people. Um, and she actually is pretty decent at taking towers as well. Like really good. Um, she's super super fucking good. Like she just pl she just plays fast. She scales well. She's she just she's got everything. Um, I think the downside to her right now is just that, um, if there are any heroes in the meta that have, like, high physical burst, she just, like, dies instantly. But, um, she's, like, a more bursty version of Drow, I think, just minus the giga stats and armor. For sure, yeah, on, I mean, even huh. you're not too scared of the Scotty, I would say, uh, considering that you have... Yeah, actually, th I think, um, actually, I haven't seen this game, but I'm pretty sure Empire wins this one. Just because, like, you can burst the gyrocopter before he pops Satanic. Um, you could literally burst anyone you want, I think. And then once you turn on BKB, you actually... There's nothing you can do. Mars has to use Arena to, like, save people from getting nuked and hit. Oh, whoa. Yule's BKB. That's... Okay, that's, that's fine. Um, I think that's fine for the Death Prophet. I feel like you really want the act, so... That way you can like ant you can just lock onto the fucking um, uh, specter, and then she she just can't target any of your allies. Yeah, we're just so to people on the stream. Hello, uh, I'm Edward. I am going to be coaching someone for the coding interview, um, in a few minutes, and we're just chilling right now until the time time comes. So. Just thanks for hanging out with me. We're just gonna be watching some good ass CS CIS Dota, um, and these are the games. This is one of the games that happened earlier today. Of course, I couldn't watch it because of work, but it's always good to unwind. At the end of the day, I just watch some freaking Dota, man. Some good ass Dota, and these are the TI10 qualifiers. So, Ooh, there we go. Holy shit! That Lena is just. Melting the fucking Mars inside his own arena. He has taken down the rest of Navi, crumbling one by one. Out comes no one now with the exorcism, but soon with the BKB, but he uses it to back away. Holy shit. Empire looking to do the same as they will be able to cleanly disengage. No one forced the BKB. You initiate on the you do a clean initiation on the Lena, and then she just like man fights you in your own arena. Holy shit. All right, all right.
Prescott's gonna burst you, so that's not an option for you either. And it has to be because a gyrocopter has to be a bit of a tank, while DP is able to deal the damage to the extra from behind. Not easy, but the team fight. It's actually similar to last game with Empire, where they were actually struggling to make their team fights work, despite them having a good, uh, good lineup. And they had to do so many big fights that it was difficult for them. This time, it just gets stunned on them. Just dragon tilt right here, or you're good to go. Activate the BKB in time, prevent the arena. Now all the damage that you're, you're talking about on this Lena is about to be amped. Most importantly, I would say, Avo is the status assist um, on the Hunter's Boomerang. Uh, going to be reducing your status assist by 25%. Uh, we don't have a Sanj and Yasha here on the Gyrocopter. We don't have any sta uh, We do have a Sanj actually on DP, pardon me, going for the Sanj and Kaya. So that'll be nice here for Empire to try and counter the one out. And as they walk right past each other, no one, he's going to get spooked. He pops the BKB and will TP away. I think that's definitely the save call to make, but uh, that is going to be maybe a seven second BKB for him. Seiyu, in the meantime, is going to be left behind in the trees and should be relatively easy to beat here. Yeah, those losing Seiyu not ideal there, but uh, you at least force out the BKB. It is a bit of a win there. Um, and Ryan just avoided this one cleanly. They still have the agent advantage of the white half of the thing. Who would get to the sharp? Question. Uh, looks like All right, you know, we're gonna get started with the coaching. Um, I'm gonna give my guy a call and let's go. Hey, Edbert. Hey, what's up? Hey, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, I can hear you. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you loud and clear. Perfect. Perfect, yeah. So, um, yeah, welcome to stream. Uh, thanks for uh, coming on. Um, give me a little bit of information about yourself, like how I can help you, where are you in the interview process, like all that jazz. Yeah, sure. I mean, um, <clears throat> I really appreciate you taking me on on such short notice. Uh, mm -hmm. So I really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, just a little background about me. Uh, I've been working as a software engineer for about two years. Uh, so relatively new to the industry, um, uh -huh. and uh, I'm, I'm not that great of an engineer, to be honest. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so I'm actually unemployed right now, and I was uh, recently let go from a startup, uh -huh. um, and that was kind of my own fault, but I won't dive into those details uh, unless you want me to. Um, nah, no need. Eh, okay. And so, yeah, I've been interviewing with uh, multiple companies, uh, you know, these past couple of months. Um, and so getting interviews isn't really the problem. Uh, the problem is really uh, kind of passing uh, on sites. Um, so I failed four on sites so far. Um, and then I'm failing a couple initial tech screens. Um, so, yeah, just. Hoping to kind of, you know, identify what level I am currently at with my years of experience and kind of identify any shortcomings or any knowledge gaps that I have. All right, cool. Um, basically, what you just told me, you have no problem getting the interviews, but you fail the on-site interviews. So to me right now, you're probably, if I had to put things on a scale, when it comes to FANG interview, FANG people, there's a reason why they are working at FANG. Um, it's just the way they evaluate things, the way they approach the engineering process, even at the junior level. So I would say equivalently a, a run-of-the-mill engineer who is average in the um, real world, you know, like outside of FANG, is probably like one level below. So if you are basically borderline L3, L4 in like startup land or something like that, you're probably solidly at an L3 or a entry level at FANG. So that can explain a lot. Um, d but I assume that a lot of these interviews that you're applying for are for the junior or mid-level or in between. Uh, yeah. So all of them have been for uh, mid-level. Yeah. That's what I thought. Um, so I would say definitely, um, based on a cursory evaluation of what you just told me, you're pretty solid at the junior level. Um, I, I think that's probably been the expectation. Now, what has the feedback been from these interviews? I kind of want to get a sense of that like where have you interviewed what do you where do you feel like you're choking all that jazz uh, sure so um yeah i actually don't get 
uh, much feedback from uh, these companies after I interview. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they kind of say they can't give feedback, but uh, a couple companies have. Um, so one um, company was, um, you know, kind of a, um, let's say, you know, like series uh, D or E startup uh, with, um, so pretty mature startup. Um, I think they were close to IPO. Um, they said that uh, my code quality wasn't where they wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there was a system design portion of the onsite, and they said that, um, you know, I was kind of lacking knowledge on building systems at scale. Um, so uh, that was, oh, and then another uh, interview I had was with Google. Uh, so it was a phone screen. Mm -hmm. um, and they said that the decision was borderline, uh, but ultimately it was my it was up to my code quality uh, that they decided to pass. You know, it wasn't good enough. Okay, so the common theme here is bad code quality. Um, so to me, that's I, I'm gonna go a little bit deeper into this. But have you read a uh, clean code by uh, what the what's his face? Um, Mar Martin, I forgot his last name. I think it's Fowler. Yeah, yeah, Fowler. Um, yes. Uh, well, I haven't read it from, you know, front to cover, but I have, um, you know, read parts of it, and I'm still kind of reading it as well. Okay. So that book is very, very good. It teaches you the fundamentals of what good code quality is, at least especially in an organized um, environment like at Fang when the engineering quality matters. Um, so I would assume that your st your job, your startup, did not enforce that or you didn't have a chance to really practice and exercise that. Because after two years, you should be familiar with like the fundamentals of clean code. Um, that's at least my take on anyone who is actually a serious coder. Um, anyone who is not, you know, that's a whole different story. Anyway, um, so in the context of the interview, what you've just told me is that your bad code quality kind of stems from a lack of being able to organize your thoughts. Does that sound about right? Uh, yeah, that sounds about right. Plus, uh, you know, uh, I guess my work experience isn't the greatest. I should mention that I wasn't at the startup for two years. I was, um, you know, previously, uh, I was only at the startup for a year. And then previously before that, I was at uh, large insurance for about a year. Mm. Okay, yeah. So you basically are solid L3. I, I, like just literally what you told me, because one year of experience is not really enough to get a lot of shit under your belt. Um, it'll teach you like the basics of the company, but it won't teach you how to be good at your job. I think that's For that, sure. so clearing that hurdle. Um, I just want to set your expectations now. Um, I can help you with the coding for sure. The system one is going to be harder because in order for you to really fully grasp the system design, you need to have looked at what a big system is and at least have gone through the rounds of modifying it, understanding what the technical limitations of it are, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that part is right. n like nigh impossible. It's like me trying to describe to you a color that you haven't seen. <laughs> yeah. So that one, Makes sense. yeah. So what is your timeline? Just so I can get a sense. Uh, uh, of trying to, you know, secure an offer. Yes. Um, you know, I'm, quickly burning through my uh you know emergency funds so mm -hmm. um asap uh, i have a lot of interviews lined up so i'm hoping i'm shooting for the end of july um but yeah that would be ideal got it so what i'm going to say for you right now right at top of the head right top here is that 80 90 percent likely we're gonna get you to an l3 offer but anything beyond that is like don't don't even I I wouldn't say it's in the realm of possibility, um, reasonably speaking. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, and, and th well, that's the thing. Like I'm perfectly okay with that. Okay. Like um, I I really think I am at that level, to be honest with you. Fine. Um, I think that's that's fine. Uh, as long as we set those expectations. Uh, now the next thing. Is that, what are the least companies that you are interviewing for? Uh, they're they're non fang. Okay. Um, so yeah, I'm 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 not even really shooting for Fang, right? Um, I mean, it'd be, it's a nice to have, but uh, that's not kind of my goal. Really, I'm just trying to land any um, any uh, you know good sized tech company. Yeah, just to get exposure to you know 
um, you know, large systems so that I can improve on my system design uh, interviews. Okay. Okay, so at least you have reasonable expectations for yourself. That's fine. Um, so what I can do here is let's actually jump into a lead coding interview. I would assume that you're comfortable with all these top with any topic like recursion arrays. Um, yeah, uh, some more than others. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, I don't care if you've seen this problem before. Um, what I care about is your thought process. Cause as you know, on my channel, we mostly focus on that, your, your approach to design and being methodic about, uh, what you, how you approach the problem, because that will always lead you to the, the right answer more often than not. Um, yeah. So with that being said, uh, just let me know if you have seen it. So let me go ahead and share you the, the Google doc. Okay, can you edit this doc? See here. Uh, yeah, it looks like you can yep. edit it. Cool, perfect. Um, so let me bust out the timer. Right, here we go so I want you to compute a valid set I want you to try and defang a IP address so for instance let's say I had this string here 1901681122 that represented a um, what's it called a valid IP address but we lost like the dots you know um, mm -hmm. so this in theory could be 1901681.22 1901681212 um, so on and so forth so what I want from you is given a given a string, I want you to return to me all the possible IP addresses that this can represent. Okay. Um, yeah, I think there's like two different kinds of uh, IP addresses, right? So you have like IP four. Um, just assume, just uh, assume that you have IPv. Was it? We're on. I know IPv six, but it's just um, just assume the standard zero to two fifty five. So it's I think IPv four. IPv four. Okay. Um, and so I think the definition or or a valid uh, IPv four um, IP address has. Uh, um, you know, three different components in the address at all times, right? So, uh, um, you always have three dots okay. uh, in the IP address. Is okay. that is that correct? Yeah, three dots. Uh, um, so I think the uh, the first dot needs to be placed after the first three digits, and then the remainder two can be placed anywhere. Is that is that true? So, sorry, repeat that. The the first dot can be placed after the first three digits, and then the remaining the remaining two um, dots can be placed um, anywhere else. In the Not remaining part of the... I wouldn't say necessarily because it, each subset is between zero and two fifty five. So you can have an IP that starts off with ten or nineteen. Okay. Um. So yeah, so I guess I don't understand, uh, you know, all the valid formats um, for an IPv4 okay. address. So basically, you have four subsets, sets each zero to two fifty five. Does that make sense? Oh okay. Um, so it's eight, it's okay, eight gotcha. Bits. Eight bits. Okay. Um. Okay, so we we have the, I guess our input would just be um, the IP address without any of the dots, and then we have to figure out um, all of the valid combinations mm -hmm. for uh, the IP fee for address. Correct. Okay. Mm. Here. 
here. Sorry, I'm just trying to think about this. Um... So for uh, this this example, is this would this be a valid uh, IP address? Uh, we have one ninety. Um, Point uh, one six eight. Wait, one two. Uh, so this would be invalid because there's not there isn't four sections, right? So uh, would this be a valid IP address? Would that be a valid IP address? Sure. Yes, because okay. it, it matches those conditions. Right, so so all possible combinations. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So yeah, I guess we could just start by placing the first dot, uh, you know, after the first digit, uh, and then we check to see uh, or or we could we could. We could initially just place a dot in each uh, after each digit. Okay. Uh, so. But like you said, you only have three dots, so. Oh right, yeah. So these are four sections here, um, and then we can check to see. Um, we can split uh, the array by the dots and check every subsection okay. and check to see if it's within zero to two fifty five. If okay. it's not, um, if it's not, then we keep moving um, our loss, our last dot here, mm -hmm. and then we repeat the process, right? So this is not valid because this section here is greater than uh, two fifty five. So we keep going, um, and then so on and so forth. Okay. So how do you plan on generating these uh, subsets? Or generating these uh, com these um, answers that you're evaluating. Um, yeah, we can just um, yeah iter we just iteratively move this dot here, the last dot all the way to the back until. Uh, Oh, we would move the last dot, and then after we move the dot, we would, uh, you know, use in, in Java, right? We would use like the split array, or split function, um, and have the dot as the delimiter, right? And then we, it, so that would output an array um, of all the sections, and then um, we can iterate through that output array and check if. Um, each element okay well let me is... let me put a pause there you are talking about iterating but what does iteration look like to you you have let's say you start from this point right you said you're gonna move you're gonna iterate over the dots what is the next step to this iteration once you have this oh right so you um you would use the split function that's not an iteration. That's just a operation that you're doing. So what is the iteration? Like I have some for loop I'm running, right? So what's the for right. loop? What is the next variable that gets changed? What's the I plus plus? What's the, um, what am I looping over? What's the next thing in my loop? Um, so you would be moving this, the dot you, okay. within the for loop, right? Okay. Um, and then, so every time you move uh, a dot. Okay. You would uh, you would split this up. All right. So you say move the dot. Where are you moving this dot? Move it in this in this example. Um, okay. So let's say previously we had the dot was right here. Okay. Um, and then we move it here, and then okay. we do the split function to break it up into four different sections. Okay. Uh, and then we iterate through those four sections to see if. Um, each element is between 0 and 255. 
Uh, yeah, does that make sense? Yeah, and if makes, it, so if, if it, okay. Now, how do you generate all the possible combinations? Because like you said, you need to try every single um, location the dot can be. How do you generate that? Hmm. Uh, let's see here. Oh, right. Because uh, I was thinking, yeah, you would just keep moving the dot until, um, you know, you reach the end of the string and then mm -hmm. uh, and then you would have to move the next one. But okay. I guess that really wouldn't work, right? Yeah, because you, you end up with like 190 and then 168, 1, 2, two ooh, and then you try checking this one, then you try checking this one, then you try checking this one, you know? Then what happens after yeah. that? Yeah, so I guess that whole approach would work. So I need to re uh, rethink this. Um, let me see here. So since we're trying to come up with, you know, all of the different valid formats, uh, I'm thinking, you know, maybe we can use, you know, some sort of backtracking approach. Okay. Uh, um, let me see here. Hmm. Let's say if we have, um, yeah, I guess we could have an array, right? And then we, um, we iterate through our string here and then we place, um, um, or, or maybe we can have like a list of lists, okay. right? Uh, so these, each list. Each sublist represents the subset of the IP IP address, mm -hmm. uh, and then we just iterate through the string, and then we place a, you know a one in the first okay. um, subset, and then we check to see if um, if it's valid, which it is. Okay. Uh, so then we can place the next. Um, Digit, okay. and it's between zero and two fifty five, and then we keep on going until uh, we get to this point, mm -hmm. um, and we know that you know we can't fit six one six eight one two two in there. Um, so that's I guess that's when we would start the backtracking, right? We would. Um, we would move the nine here uh, and then move everything over and then try again. Well, right, so we do okay. one nine. But zero. did you try every single possible combination of what's it called uh, with one and nine zero? Because, like you said, um, well, oh, yeah, okay, you're sure. right. Yeah, you, I mean, there's still you can still have one at the helm, right? And you can still have yeah. nine zero there, so that's uh, yeah, you're right. Um, so yeah, so then you would put the zero here and then, um, and then a one and then a six and then the rest of the string, right? Or the number. Um, and you'd realize that this is not valid. So then you would do your backtracking and then you would add a one here. Okay. Um, but why, why? Isn't that the same mistake that you made before with the one and a nine? Oh right, because we can, we can still have a valid address with, uh, you know, a ninety uh, here. So I guess we wouldn't backtrack here. We would uh, backtrack in the third section. Okay. Uh, so we'd have one six, um, and then eight one two two, and then we see this isn't valid, so we shift an eight over, uh, and then now we have a valid IP address. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I guess we would continue on, continue to do that um, until we reach, you know, the end of the string, right? So, mm -hmm. 
And then once that happens, and then that's when we would shift our nine over. Sure. Um, and then we would build the remainder of the subsections. Okay. That's kind of what I'm thinking. I don't know if that's you know the that's, most. That makes sense. I understand what you're thinking. So how do you want to write this? Yeah, that's. <laughs> um, I'm thinking. Do we really need this list of lists, right? I think we can. Maybe uh, make this a little more simpler. Um, well, I guess for now we'll just leave it like this. Um, so yeah, so yeah. So do you want me to go ahead and start coding, or whatever you want to do? You seem to have an idea, so. Okay. Sure. Um, so yeah, you have a function called check valid IP address or check valid IP, All right? Uh, and I'm assuming is it a string or um, it's a string, or is it just an integer? You can just consider it a string. String, okay. Um, call it IP. Um, and then I guess we could have this function, uh, you know, return a, a list of strings. Mm -hmm. So we can go ahead and create our list of strings here. Um, so, you know, uh, I guess we could just call it result. Um, and then, um, we can create our, uh, list of lists that we've described here. Mm -hmm. Um, so it'd be a list of, uh, we'll make it integers since we need to check to see if, um, each section is between zero and 255. Oops. Uh, we'll just call this, um, uh, we'll call it subsections. Um, and then we'll start iterating through our IP address, right? So. Length, um, like this plus. Um, and then we can start grabbing uh, digits and start inputting it into our subsections. Um, so uh, you know, integer um, or actually, I think there was a function called is numeric or um, get numeric value sure um, so this would be this would be an integer sorry integer um, you know C equals character do dot get numeric value at um, IP dot car at 
Aye. Sure. Um, and then, so, the, yeah, and then we need to add this to our first subsection. Okay. Um, so I guess that we would need, well, we would need another for loop uh, to kind of go through every subsection. Okay. Um, so, let's see. Uh, be less than four since there's only four subsections, right? Um, let me see subsections dot add. Um, Or sorry, subsections dot add or dot get dot add. Uh, C. Uh, um, and then this is subsections dot get adds. Okay, okay, I see what you're doing. This is gonna get. I'm gonna tell you really right now. This is gonna get very messy, very fast, and there's a very high likelihood you will run into bugs. Okay. So, I think I understand. I think I understand what you're doing, and I believe that you understand what you're doing here. Now, do you believe that this is the most efficient way of doing this? Uh, no. <laughs> or at least the most like, yeah. Or at least the most elegant. Well, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Using a you know a, a list of lists isn't probably isn't uh you know that that's definitely not elegant. I don't think. Okay. Um. But but as far as the approach, I mean, do you think it's you know viable? Sure, list the list the list. You have three inner loops. It's viable and it w can get you to the right answer. But I'm going to tell you straight up: if you this was a real interview and you said that shit to me, I would say goodbye. <laughs> Damn. Um, okay. So, so then then I then I need a I need to need optimize a, this. You need to opt. You need to at least come up with something a little more elegant because, um, I don't think it's inescapable that you will have to try every single possible combination but what you can do is make the code that you use to do it a whole lot nicer and readable okay um what you, uh, so, okay, uh, let me give you a solid hint let me give me more clear then because it seems like you're kind of stuck what is the recursive way of doing this Okay. Um, here. Oh. Um, so I guess we could have you know a recursive function that takes in um, a sub a subset, and we can add it that way. Okay. Um, so. Um, I guess let's return the list. Uh, you know, of strings. Um, you know, we're we're just gonna, uh, you know, name it helper for now. Um, and it's going to take in. Um, our subsections. And um, let's see. I'm trying to think of what we want to take in here. Uh, I guess the um, the IP string. Okay. So then, what exactly is your algorithm going to do? You say you're going to do it recursively. Well, what are you going to pass in? What does the recursion look like? Right. Um, 
So we were saying instead of, you know, adding it, you know, like this with three, you know, using multiple for loops, then uh, we can kind of do the adding using recursion. Mm -hmm. uh, so... Let me see here, I'm trying to think. So I guess the logic that we would want to, you know, encapsulate here is to, uh, you know, add uh, a part of the IP address um, into the into our subsections uh, okay. list, and then we're going to have the, you know, the check logic for uh, to see if it's between zero and two two fifty five. Okay. okay. Um, so let me see here. So you do subsections. Um. Oh, um, and I guess we would need some kind of pointer, right, uh, to recursively do this, right? Mm -hmm. um, so we do subsections. Uh, I guess we'll use I to point to the section. Uh, um, so I guess we'll make this clear, more clear, right? Okay. Um, and then we're going to add, uh, you know, the first part of our IP address. which I guess we could pass in, right? We could pass in, um, uh, let me see here. So we could pass in C, right, into our uh, helper function here. Okay. Uh, to do that, so we would have something like this. Uh, um, all right, subsections, um, C. And then our section, which would be, uh, we would start okay. with zero. For the sake of time, um, I know what you're doing. I know what it's going to end up doing. Let me ask you, do you believe that you can get to the right answer within the next five minutes here? Uh, probably not. How long would it take for you to get the right answer? Uh, <laughs> probably uh, 15 minutes. Maybe oh, That sounds about right, yeah. Yeah, okay. So you've already consumed about 26, 27 minutes. I'm gonna tell you right now, yeah. you are, you don't know what you're doing. Does that sound about right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. When it comes, yeah, for the yeah for the recursion part, yeah, I'm kind of stumped on how to actually implement that. All right. There's gonna be there's a lot of problems here right now, so I'm gonna tell you this. So let me ask you like how you felt like your performance so far was. <laughs> uh, extremely terrible. Uh. I've never actually seen this problem before. I've seen like, um, I guess a variant, but not having to kind of, um, you know, output all of the different combinations. Okay. D does this kind of track along with like your performance on other interviews? Uh, no. So this is actually, um, actually my previous interviews, I've actually come across the problem before. Um, or at least, or at least I had some sort of idea of how to solve it and I was able to get through it. Uh, but this particular problem here is, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm dumbfounded. Um, okay. One other question. When you practice, how do you practice? Do you just memorize the solution and move on or what, what do you do? Um, it's a great mix of half and half. Um, so I've been doing, um, you know, the grokking, uh, you know, the coding interview patterns. Mm-hmm. 
Do you just memorize uh, the patterns, uh, or do you actually try to dissect the patterns? Yeah, no, I've actually been uh, dissecting the patterns. So like sliding window, uh, you know, BFS, DFS. Um, you know, I never knew how to do tree problems before, and then uh, now I think I'm okay with it, especially with the BFS approaches. Okay. Um, and then, and then the other half, um, yeah, I'm kind of just like, sh uh, you know, shotgunning lead code since, you know, I don't really have, uh, that much time. So, okay. So basically this is like a very basic combinatorics, um, recursion problem. This, that's basically what this problem is. And so what I see as your bigger problem is that you're writing code when you have no idea what to, uh, well, actually, there's multiple layers to this. Let, let, the first top layer is that you are very weak with recursion. That's what's immediately uh, immediately obvious to me. After that, what mm -hmm. the problem underneath that is that you don't really tr understand the idea before you write code. Um, and then underneath that, it's that um, you're focusing too much on, oh, what functions am I going to use versus how can I actually solve this problem? So let me actually copy paste my notes here and we can get um, a more solid example of this. So um, I'll walk through the high levels, but basically the problem kind of came out within the first two, three minutes. You're focused on IPv4 versus IPv6. Chances are this problem is not focused on that. This problem is focused on actually, you know, generating the um, IP addresses from the original string. So mm. that, why are you focusing on this? You basically burn two, three minutes on that. And I'm like, why the fuck are you doing that, you know? Um, and then you're talking about, like, calling the array.split function. You're talking about, um, uh, like, you know, you're, you're basically caught... Every time I ask you a question, you caught, like, with the iteration, you just constantly jumped to, like, oh, I'm going to use this Java function. That was your answer for, like, a lot of these questions. And to me, that says, hey, you're a developer who focuses on writing code, not on solving problems, which is essentially what a junior-level developer does. But it's even worse because you don't even solve the problem either. You just like, oh, I know this Java function exists. So you answer this question as if you had just studied a Java book without having any programming experience whatsoever. Now, another sure. give for that, now, I'm not joking. Like Another give for this is that you talk about backtracking. It's like, okay, backtracking is a technique that's very specific to recursion. So I'm like, I'm expecting you to make this jump from when you say, oh, there's valid formats, therefore we can use backtracking. You're missing a step in there that says, hey, you can use recursion. And I would have expected you to acknowledge that. So this kind of tells me that, again, you don't make these connections between these ideas. You just kind of like throw the idea out and it's hopefully it sticks without actually being able to walk through the logic of it. Um, and then that also came out when you did the uh, one and the nine, when you're walking through the um, this list over here of like, oh, I'm going to do a one, then nine, zero, then I'm going to move the one to make 19. You know, and I said, hey, wait a minute, you haven't tried every single combination where one is at the helm, you know? Um, so right. this, again, so this kind of just supports the idea that you have no idea what the hell you're doing with backtracking. So it's like those little ticks right there. I can already tell like, hey, because you said this or did this, just one little like two, three second thing, I can tell what's going to happen for the next five minutes. I don't need to hear any more beyond that. Like, um, okay. And then the same thing is that when you, you write the code for the loops, and then it's a half-baked idea of what you want, because once you're writing it, then you realize you need the loops. But it seems like the loops are a kind of a core idea of what you're doing. In order to generate these subsets, you need to have the loops, So which means that you should have had the idea going in to writing the code. So uh, so I know you said that, uh, what's it called? You were like struggling, but the, the idea is, the bigger problem is that you're struggling to come up with the idea. And so you end up forming the idea while you write it. On top of that, you're slow at writing. So uh, that, that, that's what made it slow at writing. So you're saying, like, going back here, you had a list of results, and then you had subsections. But the thing is that that should have been immediately obvious, because you had that here. But the reason why it took you, like, two minutes just to write these two initialization statements, excuse me, is because you're trying to wrestle with the idea, like, oh, what do I need? It's like, well, it should have been immediately obvious what you needed. Um, it's like, you definitely needed the results, you need to collect the results for sure. And then you need to have the subsections based on what you said. So that should, you didn't need to spend two, like a minute or two just writing it. This should have just flowed out immediately. So again, what's holding you back in this situation is the fact that you don't have an idea of what you're doing. And it's only until like, what, five, seven minutes later that you realize, hey, wait a minute. Uh, no, even like eight minutes later that you needed to come up with a recursive solution. Because again, the three loops is even though it's a valid way of doing it, it's not the nicest way. 
So again, like I said, if you told me, hey, this is the optimal solution, I don't know any other way, I said, okay, thanks for applying, bye. Um, and so what you did here for recursion, it's like you had no idea. So it's like, I don't need to see anymore. You just don't know what you're doing. Um, now, what is the right way of doing this? Well, the right way of doing this would have been, and let me basically tell you, is that you would have re recognized that with your three loop solution, you, you would recognize that immediately once you actually did the example. So, and once you did that, you would have realized, huh, writing three loops seems really, really fucking, uh, not hard, but like convoluted. It's like, it's, I'm going to keep track of all these variables that I'm passing in between the loops, but essentially what I'm going to be doing with, with these loops is exactly the same, where I just grab like the number of elements, you know, all the way from my right. start position to the end. And so be, because of that, it's like, huh, I could just call, I could put that in a function and call that function over and over and over again and just tune the parameters. So that's where I would have gotten my recursion. And then to optimize it even more, instead of going from one to the end, I really only need to grab the first three elements because um, I, if I had like four elements, then I would have a number that's greater than 255. You get, you start seeing where the logic starts building up. Yeah. Yeah. And had you just walked through this logic instead of like using the code to express the logic, you would have been able to probably get at least that far. So what, again, so going back to the, so the bottom idea is that you're using code to try and explore your own ideas. You're not using code to try and act, to express it. You're using code to form it, which is a very, very good way to blow your code up and create spaghetti code. That's, and this is where basically I think a lot of the comments about your code quality being bad is coming from because you are coming up with the idea as you write the code. So the code isn't going to be very good because it's not executing a clear idea. So your code is not going to be uh, clear at all. That's basically what's happening here. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, that's a good way of putting it. So if you had to, I want you to actually try and walk through the problem again. Like I've already given you a lot of the pieces. So I, knowing that you need to come up with a recursive solution, I want you to try to start back where we left off. I want you to, um, you, let, let's just pretend that you never wrote the code, that you had this eureka moment. Hey, I need to do the recursive problem, you know? Hmm. I need to be able to uh, do this recursively, right? So what I want you to do is to be able to express this. You've seen a lot of my streams where I tell people, hey, design your code before you actually fucking do anything. Right. right. I want you to actually do that here. Okay. So yeah, go ahead. Um, okay. Hello? Did I lose you? Oh man, okay. Oh. I think we lost them. Hold up, hold up. Hey. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I think I dropped you. So sorry. Um, go ahead. <clears throat> um, okay. Yeah, so do you want me to start up here or do you want me to like start on a mm. on the bottom here of the page? Bottom of the page. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're cutting off. Okay. Um. Hello. Hey. Yeah. Okay. So I want. You to, okay. Hold on. Uh, can you can you do it from the bottom of the page again? Okay. Sure. Uh, let me. Uh, is it okay if I copy paste this here? Mhm. Mm um. Okay. Um. Okay. So yeah. I'm supposed to be designing, you know, the, the my um, my approach without using code. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so yeah, so we, uh, it looks like we can use backtracking to kind of solve this problem to, you know, produce every combination, right? So, uh, you know, backtracking is going to, um, you know, acquire recursive calls here. Okay. Um, so... Uh, you know, we could first start with the first digit, and then, uh, um, 
or I'm sorry, we need our we need our list. Uh, yeah, we're still using our list of lists approach, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then we're recursively going to add, uh, you know, every digit um, into every subsection. Mm -hmm. And if one of the subsections does not, uh, if it's not between zero and two fifty five, or if it's not valid, then we're going to shift. Um, our numbers into different subsections. Mm -hmm. um, and then once we have a valid uh, IP address, we store that valid IP into our result list. Um, and then once we um, once we finish our backtracking, then we just return our result list. Mm -hmm. OK. So um, OK, so even though you described it, I want you to actually still um, go ahead and draw out exactly what is happening. OK. Walk through um, it. You pretend like, OK, well, you said all that. So, Walk through an example. Right, OK. So here is our uh, subsections list. OK. Uh, and so the first thing we would do is add our first digit to um, our first subsection. Okay, well, I'm going to ask you, do you really need a list of lists for this? Uh, I'm thinking you don't, mm -hmm. but... Okay, so then what would you I mean, use? Yeah, I'm trying to, trying to come up with a better way. Uh... Let me see here. Well, the reason, the reason why I wanted to use a list of lists because it would be easy to kind of shift everything over, right? Why? Uh, um, uh, because, you know, if you have uh, a nine here, and if we needed to shift it over to our first section, then we could just, you know, simply add the nine to our, uh, to our list, right? Do you understand how recursion works? Um, okay, uh, well, I think I would like to know, I think I do. Uh, so are you saying that we should, uh, you know, pass our subsections inside of our recursive calls? I'm saying that if you do this the right way, you should still already have access to the original string and your position. Okay. Oh, right. So we would, um, I guess we would, um, you know, pass in a range in every recursive call, right? Um, uh, does that let make me, sense? Let me ask you, how strong is your ability, how strong is your uh, ability in recursion? Just, you know, be honest with me because uh, I could let you keep doing this or I could, you know, jump in and actually teach you how to do recursion. Uh... Yeah, I guess I'm, I'm very weak okay. at recursion, so yeah. So, let me actually it. do this problem for you so you get an understanding of recursion and everybody else as well. So here's sure. the optimal, optimal solution. So we're going to do, what we're going to do is we're going to grab 0, 1, 2 strings at a time. So we're gonna, I'm going to do this as if I was in your shoes, you know, and I had this brilliant idea in my head and I want to do this the optimal way of, you know, impressing the interviewer and getting a fucking job, you know. So uh, let's yeah. say I start off with my string, right? I'm going to grab... Grab zero, one, or two ele um, elements from the string, okay? And then I'm gonna check check if this chunk, we'll call it a chunk, right? Is, uh -huh. fills our condition, zero x, 255. If it, it is, then I can recurse. And then once I pop out of that recursion, backtrack and loop and so, Backtrack and continue grabbing chunks. So, what does this mean? This means that I can say, let's say I have like one nine zero. I, I grab the, I'll grab one element. I should say one, two, or three elements, not zero, one, or two. 
So what this means? Uh, so I'm gonna grab out of my string right now. I'm gonna have one nine zero one six eight one two two, right? Um, then I'm gonna grab. I'm gonna grab the first chunk. I'm gonna grab one element here. All right. And I see this chunk is between zero and two fifty five, right? So then I'm gonna recurse, which means making a function call. But because I've already grabbed this, then I know that I need to chop it off. And chop it off when I go in. So I can do this one of two ways. One, I can use an index and count to like nine. The other part is chopping off the original string. So let's just say that I am going to, you know, do it instead of chopping and modifying the string, I would have called a start index. Zero. Right? And so which means that I need to be able to put start index equals to one, which means that the start index adjusts by the amount I grab. So I so if it is then I can recurse, I can uh, add to the start index by plus equals the number number of elements before I pass it in to recursion. Or should I say pass it elements as param of recursion. Does it make sense so far? Because... I... Yeah, yeah. Okay. So then I'm going to, so let's say uh, I'm at nine. And then I do the same thing, right? So I'm gonna add, I need to add this, add this to my candidate, my list, my running list, should we say? Right, right, right. List. Okay. So then my running list now, um, I'm gonna add is now one comma nine, right? Let's just use this to represent whatever the hell is happening in the stack trace, right? Um, and then now I'm gonna bump up the start the starting index. So now starting index is gonna be two. Index equals to two, two, one nine, and then I'm gonna be looking at zero, right? Same thing, zero is within zero, 255, so comma zero. And then we arrive at the last one. Start index equals to three. And so I'm gonna grab another chunk. So one, nine, zero, one. Follow me so far? So instead of this, I'm yep. gonna, yeah. So notice my index, I'm just, I'm just keeping track of these variables, right? So now, I, I, once I've grabbed, once my number of elements in my candidate list is four, then I am going to actually check if this is a valid IP address. So if my, what's it called? If the number of elements in my running list is equal to four, four, uh, check valid conditions. Well, what are my valid conditions? Valid conditions, there cannot be any more string left to search. So that uh, that's gonna be one of them. Um, and then like, let me see if I can try figuring out anything else. Uh, nah, that's, pro that's probably it. So now that I see that there is stuff left over because you know, um, which is actually gonna, this is gonna be determined by start index. So I have all this um, string left over. So which means I'm not gonna use that, right? So then if there isn't, then if not, if, Let's see, a check valid conditions. If valid, add the candidate to our list of solutions. If not valid, then, then return. So let's say that this is not a valid, this is not a valid situation because I have strings left over, right? I'm gonna pop out the stack, right? So now I am back at where I left off. So now I need to grab another chunk. So I need, I need to be able to go zero one, right? And then here, uh, I'm going to bump up my start index to four because we're incrementing two by the number of elements we grab. So that's going to be four, correct? Correct. And then here, I'm going to grab, uh, let's say zero one, and I'm going to grab six. Okay. So then now let's make it, let's make our last function call stack, right? So I'm here with zero one six. Start index is now five, five, and then I'm going to check my condition. Oh, there's still string left over. Yada yada yada, right? So you, you kind of get you get the idea of what I'm doing here, right? I pop out the right. stack, um, yeah. you know, and, and you know, and so on and so forth. Um, but the exercise here, the whole reason I'm doing this exercise is so that way I can simulate the stack trace. I can show the interviewer, hey, this is exactly what's going on. This is what my logic is doing. And notice here that while I'm doing it, I can actually expand on my idea, even though this is like all pseudocode, right? And you're able to follow along. Uh, okay. 
So, so when you're, I, so when you have a problem like this and uh -huh. it involves recursion, then you should, you should go over. I, yeah, you should go. Over, you should try to, you know, come up with a design and then actually walk through the example and actually so, show the stack trace, mm -hmm. just like this. Yeah. So the thing is that even though my idea wasn't necessarily like fully fleshed out, I was able to. I could still kind of get my. I could still kind of build on it. But more importantly, is that I was using an actual example, walking through it and exercising my idea. You saw like I gave a basic idea of what I wanted to do. It's like, hey, I want to grab right. one, two, or three chunks for the string. Um, and if it's a, and if the chunk is valid, then I'm going to add to my running list and then advance the start index. And then, you know, my exit condition forms up here, you know, just from, this is all pure logic. This is nothing, no crazy, uh, coming up with a, um, uh, what's it called? Um, random thing out of left field, you know, like I explicitly state every right. single one of my steps and then I show, Hey, well, maybe I didn't consider this, maybe I didn't consider this, but in actuality, what I would have done is to be able to, um, probably get 80% of this out. Instead, I kind of just grabbed, I just like started off with like a some small ch ass chunk, but um, notice I was still able to build the idea up. I did the recursive case and then I considered right. my exit conditions. So this is like, I think that one of the big pieces of mastering recursion is that you need to understand what is going on at each stack trace, what you need to pass in. And the best way to do this is by, you know, writing out the damn variables instead of like considering, oh, what do I need to do? What, maybe I need this, maybe I need that. Like, well, instead of like trying to think your way through it, why not actually do the problem? Right. So, so just to clarify, you would actually kind of write all of this out and actually go through the stack trace during the interview. Yeah. Um. And you know, it only took me like what? Um. I want to say like seven minutes. Okay. Yeah. No, that's. Yeah. Let's say it took me like like I uh, it took you like me like 10, 15 minutes to come to this point, right? Seven minutes to write it, right. and translating this shit to code probably take another five, right? Right. Yeah, because I already have a very clear idea. You have a clear idea of what I, I'm doing, you know? So it's like five minutes to write it. Um, and so that puts the problem solving at like 22 minutes and then let's say two, three minutes for checking. 25 minutes to solve the problem. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that makes, <laughs> that makes a lot more sense. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I'm going to yeah, say right now, um, for the sake of the coaching session, let's not do an, I'm not going to do another recursion problem with you. Because it's obvious that okay. you're very weak on that, and that's a mechanical problem that I can't really solve for you. But I've at least given you the building blocks on how to actually do it. Sure. But the key takeaway I want you to take away from all this is you need to have an idea of the problem and solution instead of, oh, what functions am I going to call? Notice here, I didn't specify what data structure I was going to use. I didn't say I was going to use an array.split. I mean, there's many ways of actually doing this. You know, um, I could, uh, like, it doesn't matter. But what matters is right. that as long as the idea is solid, then the code and whatever function I'm going to use is going to fall right out of that. It's not the other way around. Your implementation should not drive the idea. It should be the other way around. You should have an idea, and then the implementation limits your idea, and then you can work around it if you need. But if you commit yourself to an implementation, then that restricts your idea to begin with, and you may not even solve the problem, which is exactly what we saw with you. Right. So, that being said, do you understand the point here? Yeah. Okay. Any questions? Yeah. Makes sense. Uh, no. No. Okay. So, what I want you to do for the next, this next problem is to walk through your idea. Do not write code until you have a very clear idea of what you want to do. Now, this idea may not be perfect, but you can at least write out the pseudocode for it. Write out the design for it. You can walk through it with an example. And then once you do that, then you can go ahead and do whatever the hell you want. But I want you to get a solid idea before you even write like a uh, public static void main or whatever fuck it is. Okay? Right. So. Oh, man. So you've probably seen this problem before, but I don't care. This is a purely an exercise in being able to do what we discussed. So suppose I gave you a linked list of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? What mm -hmm. I want you to do is move all the even, all the elements in even positions to the front of the list and all the odds to the back. So if I have 0, 2, 4, 1, 3, 5, I'm, this is my result. So the reason why this is the case is because in my, in my linked list, I have 0 at the 0th position, 2 at the 2nd position, 4th at the 4th position, yada yada. 
I was able to move all these elements up here and 135 is at the end. So go ahead. Okay, so we're moving the even indexed elements to the uh, to the front. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so not the not the value of the linked list, right? It's more of the the index. Mm -hmm. uh, is that correct? Yeah, you're moving the odd indexed to the end. Okay, odd indexed. Okay. Uh, so yeah, um, um, I guess we can. Uh, you know, start with the first, uh, the node, which would be an, uh, which would be an odd indexed node, right? Mm. Or the first uh, node is zero. Uh, is zero, right? So sorry. So that would be that would be your your first even node, and that's we want all the even nodes in the front. I mean, right? I, I I guess I understand what you're saying. It's like, oh yeah, technically it's quote unquote the English first first position, but let's just start at zero because we're computer programmers. Right, right. So, so all even indexed uh, nodes mm -hmm. uh, to the front of the list. Okay. So yeah. So we start with the first node. Uh, so it's even, right? Um, and then we want to append um, append the node. Uh, or, um, or not append. We want to um, change. Uh, the node that it's pointing to mm -hmm. uh, um, to uh, you know our current node uh, or, or, or I'm getting to in the weeds let's just say to the uh, uh, the next uh, even indexed node okay right uh, Oh, so yeah, so we have our, uh, let's have a current pointer, which uh, starts with the first node, right? I would say you're kind of um, not sure about your own idea. So I recommend you walk through an example, draw the pointers out. Okay, sure. Um, so here, mm -hmm. we will, I will copy and paste to not mess that up. Sure. Um, so let's say our current pointer um, is here the first index element, mm -hmm. and we know that here. Um, so we'll have some, you know, some dummy node, right? That okay. points to uh, this first node. So we'll add, um, you know, zero mm -hmm. uh, to our dummy node, and then we're going to change. Um, the node that zero is pointing to to the next even index node, so it would just be uh, two, right? Okay. Um, and then we're going to move our uh, current pointer to um, the node that we just added. Okay. Um, so then it would look like this. Oh, this is kind of hard to draw in Google Docs. Uh, so it does, yeah, you're gonna be doing in Google Docs. Zero. So get used to it. <laughs> so uh, zero, and then we're gonna use a. Well, let's put this on the next line, right? Um, and then the slash here. Right. Mm -hmm. So this is what our this is what our current list looks like. Sure. Okay. Right. Fine. Um. But then, how do you remember oh. the one? Uh, okay, so then I guess we would need a second pointer okay. uh, um, to, to point at this one. So um, I guess we'll call it previous. Okay. Um, so now two. Uh, oh, yeah, so our current pointer was at two, right? Um, and so now we need to move. Uh, we need to have this the node that our current pointer is pointing to to have to point to the next uh, even index node, which is four. Mm. Right. Okay. Uh, okay. So then you have a previous node. All right. Sure. Go ahead. Keep going. 
Um, so now... Oh, Jesus. Uh, let me move this up here. Uh, so that, this is what it looks like. Um, but so, yeah, so I guess this previous here is a problem because now um, it still points at two. Okay. Uh, um, so then what do you want to do? So, so now then we would change... Um, so we see that there are no more even index nodes, right? Okay. Um, so then we would go back but to our previous you, pointer. Okay, yeah, your previous pointer, but then this isn't pointing anywhere. No, well, it might be. Where's the Right. Uh, this is still pointing at two. Okay. So we change uh, its pointer to point at three now. Well, again, you lost this reference to three. So, are you planning on keeping every keeping a reference to every single odd node that you skipped? Oh, okay. So yeah, we lost. So this would get garbage collected, right? This three after we moved it. It's like, well, where is it? You know. Oh, right, 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 right. Um, so I guess before, I guess we have to kind of do that in tandem, right? Moving okay. the current node and the previous node. Okay, but there's an easier way of doing it. Hmm. I mean, you're kind of already doing it anyway. Here's the hint, you're already kind of doing it, so. Uh, I am? Um, let me see here. So you're saying there's an easier way of just kind of moving the pointers? Uh, I'm saying there's know, an easier way of handling the entire situation. Hmm. Oh, well, I guess since we've... Oh, no, that won't work. I was going to say we could connect four to one and then go on and... But that okay, there's, sense, there's, there's another way. There's another way. It's a lot simpler. I'll give you I'll give you a minute to figure it out, and if you don't, I'll, I'll tell you. <laughs> okay. Um... Yeah, I'm I'm blanking here. Do you um, want to try building the even list as well? You're building the yeah, sorry, you're building the even list, right? What about the yes. odd? You want to build it at the same time? Oh yeah, I, right. Yeah, I guess that would make sense. I mean, you could either so, keep I track, guess... keep individual pointers, keeping track of the um, every single odd, and then build it. Or, you know, like the more efficient thing is to build it at the same time. You know, it's just literally, it, it, like, like what I just said is just literally lo just logic, you know? Cause, right, like, yeah. Yeah, so it's like just, just follow the efficiency logic. So I think this is this small little tidbit for you. So I'm going to formalize it so it's not like, yeah, 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 move on. It's going to be like, okay, so I am already, the problem I'm, gonna, I'm facing here is I need to keep track of every single odd uh, node, which means like keeping a rep, keeping individual references so that I can merge them later, you know? I was like, okay, well, the inefficiency here is I have to keep track of every single odd node and merge them later. So the so more efficient would be to merge them at while I iterate. That'd be the more efficient. Well, again, you're, you're doing that with the even ones, so... You, you see how the, the, the solution just kind of falls out of logic of, like, what is more efficient? Right. Right. And this should be the driving question whenever you're stuck. Or, or it's like, or someone says, hey, there's an easy way of doing it. You should be asking yourself, what is more efficient? What is, the, like, all the shit that I'm doing that is 
um, you know, overboard. Like, what are the variables I'm juggling? What is all the um, what what are the, all the complications? The efficient way is almost always time, space, complexity, or less work. That's it. Right. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. So so yeah. So I guess we would build the the two lists uh, together at the at the same time. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah. So then we would have you know one. Uh, three and then five, and then so once we have our two, uh, you know, even and on list, then we have to connect the tail of the um, of the even list to the head of the of the um, odd list. Sure. But the question now is, well, I want you to walk through the example and do that. Like, show me exactly what you're doing. How you, right. How okay. You, uh, like how you intend on accomplishing this? Oh, whoops. Right. So we have our. Um, our current pointer. Uh, let's just say our, um, you know, our. Our even pointer and odd pointer, right? Um, and then we have our two um, lists, right? So dummy node, and then another dummy node. Um, so the first thing we do is we attach, uh, you know, zero to our even list, and then we move our uh, even pointer um, here. Okay. And then we attach our uh, odd pointer here. And then we move our odd pointer here. Um, and then so on and so forth, right? So mm -hmm. this becomes uh, two. Uh, and then this becomes three. Um, and then, yeah, we move everything over. Crap. Right. Okay. Uh, this becomes four. Um, and this becomes five. Mm -hmm. Oh, so I think I had the pointers mixed up, right? So. Um, it's fine. You, when we you when we finish. Solid. Okay. Yeah. So w when we finish building this out, right? Mm -hmm. uh, this is kind of where our pointers are going to be. Okay. Um. So. How do you know you're done though? Um, when I guess the, uh, the the odd pointer when it's uh, dot next is null. Okay, sure. That's that's how we know we can stop. Okay. Um, so the uh, so now we have to connect the lists together, right? Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, I guess one way we could do that is just. Uh, traverse our even list, right? Okay. Uh, until we get to the end here. But you already have a pointer at the end, don't you? Oh, yeah, that's correct. We have our even pointer already pointing here. Mm -hmm. So, uh, um, so the, yeah, then we would just uh, point this to the head of um, our odd list. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and we can get the head of this list by um, referencing the dummy node. Dummy node not dot next to get the head of this list. Okay, sure. So okay, so then you, you I think you understand the solution. Now, what do you think is the um, you know what, let, 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 before we go on, I want you to go ahead and write out the code for this. I'm curious, because I think I know there's some other things I want to address here, but um, let, let's actually see what you do. Okay, sure. Um, so, um, we'll just call it list node as the return type. Um, and then we're going to say um, rearrange. Um, 
and it takes in one link list. Right? Um, so the first thing we can do is um, create our even list, right? So even. Oops, it's supposed to be a semicolon. Uh, and then odd. Mm -hmm. List node. Right. Um, and then we can start traversing through our uh, linked list, right? So. Um, while node, um, oh, uh, sorry, we need our, our pointers, right? Um, so let's just call this even list and then odd list. And then we'll have our pointer odd, uh, point. Or sorry, let's, let's first initialize our even pointer since it'll be the first uh, node, right? Mm -hmm. And then we initialize our even to even.next. And then we say while well, even um, or while well, odd dot next does not equal null. Uh, since odd will always be ahead of the even pointer. Um, this now we can start building our even and odd lists in this for loop or this while uh, loop, right? So even uh, even list dot next equals um, even then odd list dot next equals mm -hmm. uh, odd, right? And then we have to move our pointers, right? So even equals um, even equals even dot next or uh, yeah dot next dot next and then odd equals um, odd dot next uh, dot next right uh, so okay well, now we should have... I do want to say, okay, well, odd does not equal next. Even not next. Even list dot next is even, sure. Odd list dot next is even, sure. Now, do you see any potential issues with this? Um, even list dot next. Um... With uh, with this part here. Mhm. Mm well, just in general, your code might cr can your code crash. Oh, okay. Um. Here. Uh, right. If if I guess if we just had one node, right. Sure. Um, mm -hmm. Then this could. Oh right. So I guess we'll say well. Um, 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 well, even does not equal null. I think that should solve. Okay, but it yeah, is getting awesome. okay. Let me see. Um, sure. Um, well, I guess yeah. If you, we is there one another node, way right? you can? Is there another way you can crash? Oh, right, I guess, uh, f right, so yeah, if we had just one node, right, then our even would point there, and then our odd would be null, mm -hmm. right? Okay, so, so I'm not so going to be, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take, we're going to go to the next step. You come up with the idea, and you saw how quickly you wrote the code, right? Right. 
Now the next step is, okay, how do I make sure my idea is bulletproof? Because that's essentially what this is. This idea, this right now is you um, basically thrashing because you know that there's bugs here. So I'm going to patch it. I'm going to, uh, you know, I'm going to patch it again. There's going to be another bug. I'm going to patch it back and forth until it's fixed. That's essentially what you're doing. What we want to do is get to a point where our code is absolutely fucking bulletproof. And you know what the code that is least likely to be buggy? Uh, well-designed code. No, more specifically? Um... Uh... More specific than well designed. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I'm not sure. If you... How about code that's giga simple? Ah, uh, okay. It's like the simple. It's very easy. Like the simpler the code is, the less likely you're able to make mistakes. Like if I asked you to like you know print a statement, you could write that, and there's like very low like chance that it will that you're gonna write it wrong. You know, if I asked you to write a for loop that counting from one to ten, there's a very low chance that you write it wrong. But if I ask right. you to like write some fucking algorithm to you know like do some random bullshit like this, and then you start putting in these like really weird um, if statements and shit, then it's like there's a very high chance that you do things wrong. So let's take your idea now and make this much simpler and easier to execute on. So how can we do this? Well, first we can do it by testing, right? So let's say um, all the different conditions is that um, what you're doing is basically looking at even and odd at the exact same time, right? Mm -hmm. So, what are all the different ways that you can look at even and odd? Well, all the different ways is that if, what happens if even is null, odd is null. Can you handle that scenario? Or what happens if even is not null, odd is null, and then the e is, is not null, odd is not null. These are all the only cases that you can run into, because you, we're not going to count the case where e is null and then odd is not null. So, if you had thought about this, like all the possible ways or possible scenarios that your loop can run into, you should be able to handle this. And then you, it should have been immediately obvious that what you needed to test for. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, so going back to this, let's actually redo what this shit here. So, now that you know all the possible ways your even and odd can actually be, can actually look what they can look at, can you come up with a much cleaner loop? Yeah, let's see here. Um, so I, yeah, I guess the first thing we should check right before we even assign our even and odd pointers is to check if, um, you know, even is not null and then odd is null, right? Mm -hmm. um, so if that's the case, then we would just return. Um, we would just return even, right? Okay. Um, so you know if you know odd, uh, you know it's null. Uh, then just return uh, even. Ah. Mm. Uh. Okay, let me be more specific. As you iterate these even and odds, right? You will encounter these scenarios. Oh, okay. Do you understand why? Uh, yeah, so when, I guess, when we... Uh, or e is no, odd is no. Uh, well, I guess I don't understand when these two would be null if we're it as we're iterating through this uh, linked list. What happens if you go out of the list? What's the value oh, of this? Right. What value is this? Uh, no, so yeah, they're all null. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you something else. Like, trying to compare even.next is null and odd.next is null is a situation that you should try to avoid. Of course, there are situations where you will do this, but almost always, it's just simply easier to move the node to null and then evaluate that rather than trying to do it preemptively. Uh, okay, so... We, we, I'm just saying as a general you know, rule of thumb. It's not always a hard and fast thing that you need to do, 
but it's just something to keep in mind. Okay. Um. So so yeah so when even is not null and um and and odd is not all. Okay. Um, so would that handle all these cases? Would it? Uh, e not null. Yeah, it would, right? Okay. Because if one of those are null, then we would break out, right? Okay, so then what about the case of E not null, odd is null? Actually, let, let me ask you, what is a scenario that you could run into with this? Um, when we have E pointing here, um, and then the odd is... Outside. Five is it? Five is not um is not even. So you're not gonna run into that. So, what what was not situation? Oh yeah, you're right. Uh oh okay. Um, if we had, you know, an even number of nodes in our linked list. Or yeah. Zero, one, yeah, you have your e point to four, and then you have your odd point to null. Yeah. I mean, you can handle that in the loop. You can handle that as some extra case doesn't matter you just need to be able to handle it but the key here is that you need to be thinking about these examples these counter examples and how to handle them right um yeah so i mean this would handle it though right um okay well then let's say you, yeah your even is not null odd is not null Okay. Yeah. Well, walk through it. Walk through this particular example and see what happens. Let's start your let's start your okay. pointers. Yeah. Walk through it and prove to me that you can handle it. Sure. So here we go. Uh, even is not null. Odd is not null. Right. So we sure. move e over, and okay. then we move odd over. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm just gonna delete these for the sake of um. Example. Okay. Yeah. You're adding the node. Now what? Okay. Um. And then we add you know two to the even list. And then move over. Okay, you add two to the even list. And then you add uh, three to the odd list, sure. Now what? And then we move our, and then we move our point over, and then okay. um, odd is null now. Yeah, oh, but look at this. Your your loop is even does not equal oh, null, odd is not equal null. So you are not going to enter that loop anymore. Oh, right. See? Just step through shit. Okay. Because we we want to exit out of the loop when everything is attached, right? So I mean, if missed, that's what the way you want to go, like I said, it could be in the loop, it could be outside it. It doesn't matter. You just need to be able to handle it. And right. I just showed you based on the conditions that you literally wrote here, it did not handle it so far. So, you know. Okay. Um. So, yeah, so I guess let's just try to account for that in this uh, while loop, right? So, sure. So, how do you want to do it? Uh, um, let's see here. Um... Then I guess we would just check for even, right? We would just get rid of this. Okay. Um, and only check to see if even is not null. Okay. Since we know it will always lag behind. Okay. Um, and I think that seems. So then, yeah. what do you do? So then, what are you gonna do? Uh, oh, so we would break out when you know. Um, you know odd point it would point out and then okay. um, or even would point to null and then we'd break out okay so write it out write it out show it to me okay so uh even list uh dot next equals um even um and then odd list dot next equals odd okay um, and then, yeah, we would have to move our even pointer, right? So even, uh, equals even dot next. Or dot next dot next. Okay. And then odd 
dot next uh, on equals on dot next dot next. Are you sure? Oh, I, we would get a no pointer exception. Right? Okay, right, because you have these other cases that get the handle. <laughs> Okay, so all right, well, then let's let's handle it outside the loop then, I guess. Okay. Um, since. But you just said that you showed me an example of you handling it, so. I mean, it's up to you. Oh well, I mean, it didn't handle this this uh, this case mm -hmm. though. Okay. Right. So. Okay. So how do you want to handle it? What's the easiest way to do it? We would just do it outside of the the while loop. Is there a better way? Mm. Oh, I guess we could check, you know, within the uh, the while loop, right? We could say, yeah. "Hey, is." Um, Right, if um, you know, odd, um, you know, is null. Okay. Um, then, um, then we would just break out. Sure. Let's see what that but works. Yeah. Okay, that works, but is there another error? Um, oh, yeah. Well, actually... Oh, yeah, I guess we would get a null pointer here because... Um, because if... So if we're, if we're here, right... Um, then e dot next dot next um, would be null. Okay, so how do you want to handle it? We'd be calling dot next on null. Sure. How what do you want to handle it? Oh, so then we would. Oh, whoops. Uh, so we would do it before. We would check it before before we move the uh, our even pointer. Sure. And yeah, okay. So that should that should handle this, and we would come out with this. Okay. Um. Fine. And then join it at the end. Do 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 what you need to do. Okay. So now we know that even is pointing at the um, the tail of our even list, right? So okay, even... but then you also have odd needs to be updated, right? Um. Well, we just have to add, uh, we just have to point four to the head of odd. No, I mean like in the loop. You move, you oh, in the loop? You built your list, even on list.next, it's also, this is also kind of incorrect, but uh, we'll do it later. So even that next is wrong, I mean, it, it's, it's done, odd.next is done. Now, where is odd pointing? Um, odd is pointing to null. Really? Uh, all this stuff next. Odd hasn't changed. So when you go to the loop again, you're going to add the same node. Oh, oh, right. Um, this is what I mean by draw it out. Odd next. Done you kind of fell, you fell back in the habit here. I want you to be able to draw shit out. Okay. Um, yeah, do you want me to go back and draw it? Yeah, like, or... in fact, look at your even, there's also one more bug here. What is it? Okay, uh, so let's start here. Um, even is not null. Okay. So we're going to move even. Um, we're going to add zero, right? And then we're going to move odd dot next to dot next, okay. right? And then okay. we're going to move even. Uh, so yeah, zero, one. Okay. And then we're going to add. Is that what the code's nodes. doing? Where's even list pointing to right now? 
Um, all right. Um, so even list equals even list up next. I don't want you to just you're just wanting the same habit again. You're, okay, you're, you're like, yeah, oh, right. you're, so, you're just like, oh, let me patch it and move on. Prove to right, me that this so... is the right order of operations. Prove to me. Okay. Start from the beginning. So... Start from the beginning. Each step of your code, each step that you want to do. <laughs> I'm making okay. you do this so that way you get in the habit so you're not like fucking pa patching code and shit. Sure. Go ahead. Um, so, all right. Where's your, no, where's even... your pointers? Where's your even list, even list and odd list pointers? Oh, right, right. They're here. Uh, so, even list. Uh, we'll just do EL for short. Sure. And then... Oh, well. Okay. Okay. Here we go. go so, even's not null, so we're going to move even list dot next. Um, even list here dot next is equal to zero. Okay. Um, and then the same thing with the odd list. Okay. Okay, odd is not null. Now we move our odd pointer. Uh, and then we move our even pointer. Okay, sure. Okay, and then now we move our even list and all this pointer. Okay. So here, uh, and then here. Okay. Okay, um, and then even's not null, so uh, we add two to the even list, and then we mm -hmm. add three to the odd list, and then we move everything over. Okay. Um, Wait, wait, sorry, sorry. So three, yes, yeah, so this goes here. Mm -hmm. um, and then our even list points four. Okay. And then now we move our pointers, our list pointers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then now odd is null. Wait, you're skipping steps. Start from the beginning. You start. Oh, start oh yeah. Your, I, don't skip oh, right. fucking sorry, steps. Sorry. Even is not null, uh -huh. so even list dot next equals even, mm -hmm. right? So four, mm -hmm. um, and then odd is pointing to null, so this becomes null. Sure. Uh, and then so odd is null, so we break out of the for loop or right. while loop. Okay. Um, so yeah, everything looks good now. All right. Um, so let's uh, let's move our even list. Pointer, right? Um, you know, if the well, I guess we would we would have a conditional here to check to see if um, if even if even list dot next is null, then we don't want to move our pointer. Okay. But if it's not null, then we want to move it to the end. Okay. Um, or, or I guess we still have our even pointer pointing here, right? So, so we would want to use our even pointer, not our even list pointer. Okay. Uh, um, yeah, so let's, let's just use our even pointer, right? Cause it's already pointing at the, at the, um, at the tail of our even list. Okay. So even is there a way that this can be, give you something a little a little funky results? Uh yeah, if even is ever null. Mm-hmm. Okay, so then um we would just use even list then. So even list would we? Uh, well, yeah, I guess we would have to move even list right over. Okay, but how would you? And then connect. What? How do you determine that then? How do you determine what's the end? Um. Right. Oh, oops. Yeah. So if, um, you know, even list. Uh, next, if it doesn't equal null, 
Okay. Um, then we know we need to move it, right? Okay. Uh, so even list um, equals even list dot next. Right, so that gets us to the end. Sure. Um, and then let's, we need a, uh, we need a pointer to point at our odd list, right? So odd head equals, um, um, odd list. Yep. Right, and then, so now we point um, our even list on next, mm -hmm. and we set it equal to, uh, you know, the head of the odd list. Mm -hmm. um, and then the last step is to return, um, oh, I guess we need a head for the even list as well, right? Okay. Uh, let's node uh, even head equals even list. Uh, and then we would just return even head dot next. Okay. I'm going to stop you here. So basically, towards the end, you started collapsing again. You're just like, oh, patch and pray, patch and pray, patch and pray. So <laughs> I'm going to just, let me, just give me your thoughts right now. How are you feeling? Uh, not, not too good. Yeah. No, I wouldn't be. Uh, uh yeah. Cause I, I am following, I am falling into the, yeah, the patch and pray again. Yeah, so this is basically what's killing you. Um, and if I'm being honest, yeah, um, you have a lot of work to do. So and I, there's going to be a, we have like a lot, uh, 15 minutes. But here's what I'm going to do. What I want, I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I would do the problem. And then I okay. want you to remember this. So be, be, look at the way I do it. Um, so if I was going to do this, I would have said, okay, well, I know that I want the final state to be um, one, was it zero four two one three five, right? Right. And so I would have done exactly what you did. Like start with two, build two, build, start with an idea. Build two lists, right? Based on even positions, odd positions, right? So I'd keep a pointer, keep a pointer here, keep a pointer here, and then at even, odd. And then I would add, build list, build list, and then advance the pointers. The only thing is that I would only keep track of even. I would just recycle odd every single time. So what do I mean by this? So what I would do is I would just look at e like list node even, and then while even does not equal null. Because all the different cases, like I said, the, the cases I can handle, I need to be able to handle is if, uh, if it's zero, zero point into null, or you know, or let's call it x while I'm iterating, right? X point to null, x point to y, and then um, that's it. In theory, this is or like if x is equal to null, x is equal to null. These are the three cases I need to handle, correct? So with this loop, I know that once I hit null, I'm done iterating through the list. That leaves these two conditions necessarily. So what I'll do is I'll create a node odd to represent even dot next. Right now I have created boom. A node that's pointing to this next element here. So I know that I'm gonna just pass the note, what's it called? The odd list builder dot next is equal to odd. Or, let, let's, just, or let's, let's just say even for now, right? Even list builder is even next to even. Boom. Okay, so then I would I would have draw, I'm gonna draw this out as well just for my own sake. Um so then I'll have I'll have it built here. Um and then after that I'll be looking at odd. Huh. Well my node it could either be node null or not null. I don't care. I'm going to append it as well. So odd list builder dot next equals to odd, right? So in theory, that could be, that could be null as well. So that could be null. So then I'm going to move even list builder equals to even list builder dot next odd list builder equals to odd list builder dot next. And then I would just keep going until the even is null. So the difference between what you did and what I did is literally just compact code and is a lot easy and there's only a handful of cases that I need to handle. Does it make sense? Right. Uh, let me see. So there is a problem of course if like if odd list builder does end up being null. 
from before. So then I would just check that. So, and the way I would do this, I would just run through an okay. example. I'd run through this example. I'd run through, um, what's it called? An example where I have this, but the, and then, and so on and so forth. Now, why the heck am I doing showing you this? The reason why is like I, I did a watered down version of what you did. The only difference is that I use less variables. Do you remember what I said at the beginning of this problem? What is the easiest code to be bug free? Simplest code. This looks pretty damn simple to me. Yeah. Like I'm doing all this shit. Like I, yeah, like sure. I need to keep track of the heads, of course. I'm gonna have all this shit at the top. But the difference between what I wrote and what you wrote is, it's literally a cap the code lines, right? I don't. And then at the yeah, end, yeah, yeah. So it, it's like, um, what I'm trying to get you to, what I'm trying to show you here today is that if you can uh, design it, you can handle the right cases. You don't need to design very much. And the reason why I'm having you do like these write out what the variable names are is because you haven't shown that you are capable of actually keeping track of those variables. So I'm making you write it out every single time. And I think you should consider this exercise. Right. Like when you do another problem, so let's just, let's take a do so, so homework. So I want one. When you do a problem, run through examples and write out the variables and pointers, wherever the hell they are. So this is like your stack traces, traces, uh, your linked lists, whatever, you know? Um, the next one is that if you actually like design this, design your shit, like before you even write it, design it before you even write. It. Okay. And then after that, um, you basically need to come up with a simple problem, come up with a simple, simple solution. Because what I see here is that you're just like, Oh, let me, let me try and do all this shit in my head. Don't do shit in your head. Cause that shit is what's getting you into trouble here. So, um, and so basically what I'm trying to tell you is that also fourth one, you need to also be able to test your goddamn code. Try to break your idea. It's like, Oh, what happens here? What happened is like, and the more you can test, the more you can actually see where the flaws are. And then this should be able to train you to make, okay, next time I need to write this, instead of coming up with this monstrosity, I can simplify my code in order to handle all these different conditions. Do you understand? Yeah. So I want, what I want you to do is try to see what it takes to go from your crazy ass solution here to a more optimal solution. I'm not going to say this one's more optimal because I'm using two list builders. There's optimal solution to this one is to not use a list builder to do this in place. I want you to be able to try solving for that and be able to write up, write up a small, uh, you know, explanation that logically walks through the problem. Like, and when I say log walks through the problem, I mean your thought process. How you, how you went from your current solution to the optimal one, right? So that way, I, even a five-year-old can understand. So. So, that being said, um, and I would also want you to try and do the backtracking problem as well. Try to come up with a very clean, simple solution. Now these problems okay. are available online. You can compare your code. You can do whatever the hell you want, but I want you to at least take a stab at being complete with your code, with your, everything you're doing. Um, and to be able to design very, very cleanly what you are doing here. Because if you can get over this hump, I think you'll have a much better chance of solving problems much more consistently. So, mm. stop, so does that make sense? Does it make sense? Yeah, no, that, that helps a lot. Okay, we have seven um, minutes left. Um, there's not enough time yeah. to really do another problem. Do you have That's any cool. questions, any comments, anything you want to ask me while you prepare for the next seven weeks or so? Okay, yeah, I mean... Um, yeah, I mean, what I... I guess what I think an interview should be, how it should be conducted, or not conducted, but how I think it should play out is just like, uh, you know, having the candidate immediately kind of know what to do versus um, kind of what you showed. And I feel like I haven't really been doing that, so I haven't really been communicating 
uh, you know, my thought process um, correctly to my interviewer. So that's probably kind of where I'm running into trouble. So I think, yeah, like how you said to write out the stack trace when you're doing this recursion problem um, Here's... and like actually, okay, actually but... doing that in the interview. There's a, what you that... said there is, I'm going to say it's bullshit. And the reason why it's bullshit is because from what I saw, it's not so much that you, were, you weren't communicating your ideas. You were communicating them just fine, actually. Like, for what was going on in your head. The problem is that what's going on in your head sucked. Mm. That's the real problem. It's like, everyone kind of walks into these interviews thinking, Holy, uh, I was like, oh, I'm doing everything right. You know, I am communicating all my thoughts. So then if you're communicating right. all your thoughts, then your thoughts must be the ones that are issue are the issue. Like, I saw many, many times... You were basically patching and praying, right? And that's exactly what's going on in your head. You're like, oh, I didn't think that far ahead. I didn't, it, you, it was a symptom multiple, multiple times. And right. if you, let's think of it from my perspective. Would I ever hire someone who is patching their fucking code without thinking through it? Right, right. Okay, so yeah, um, I guess, yeah, communication is not the problem. It's, yeah, the actual approach, like it's not good. Mm -hmm. So actually, you know, actually going through like typing out examples um is what's going to help me lead like typing out examples during the interview is going to help me myself get to that better approach right and not just that it's also an exercise for you to stop fucking doing things in your head right, right so right. that way you can know that there is a logic to your own thoughts so like i said here um going back to like the recursion problem I made you draw, right? Like, I yelled at you to fucking write those pointers because you were missing out on them. You just kind of assumed, oh, it worked when you did your even list, but it turns out that's not actually the case. And when you do enough of these problems, like, you'll see like very similar mechanics that appear over and over and over again. And once you practice those mechanics and patterns, you never forget it. So that's why I can do right. like this shit like really, really fast. Like, I'm, like, I'm kind of familiar with the solution is, but I guarantee you, if you knew what a solution was and I would knew what a solution was to a problem, you would probably still get it wrong. Right. So um, that's kind of the point here is like a lot of these things should be mechanical. The only thing that should not be mechanical or at least like automatic is logic. You need to be able to parse through the problem. And the very basic step is knowing what the fuck is going on. So this is like, this is why I say be very deliberate in your practice. And this is what I want you to work on for at least for the next week. Give this shit a try. If it doesn't work, then it doesn't work, whatever, man. Um, but I want you to really make a sincere effort to doing this. Write out, try to like bulletproof your problem and solution before you write your code. Like, you know, right. come, come with a simple solution, come with a design, test your design, try all the different ways that design can fail, what are all the conditions it needs to handle, and keep doing that over and over and over again until you come up with a very simple solution that handles every single possible case you could throw it at it. There's a lot underneath that as well because, you know, there's like the question of what constitutes complete testing, what are the, you know, how many cases do I really have to handle, what is the simplest code I can come up with without losing, um, communi without losing value to the interviewer and all that jazz. But you'll run to those problems as you do it. But the first step is to be able to do it to begin with, so. Okay, sure. Okay, are there any other questions that you have? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, just curious. Um you know, since you're an interviewer, um, have you ever passed someone who wasn't able to, you know, completely solve an interview problem? Uh, yeah, I did, um, back at Apple. Um, I think yeah, he did that because okay. he was, most of the jam was actually in the fact that he natively spoke Spanish and his English communication skill, and the fact that he spoke English, like, his English skills were not that great, but you could tell he was logically parsing through the problem, but he was, like, struggling to get the words out and find the right English translation. He was, like, trying to point at what he was doing and then using, like, English, like very short English phrases but the fact that he was able to even do that and like still make an effort like he you knew he was doing the right thing in his head he was just trying to spend more time trying to make sure you understood it and you know I'm cool with that because you know the logic you knew like if you gave him enough time he was going to solve it you know like all, and right. of course like if it's if the English is the only problem but that's like you know that can always we can always bridge that gap. You know, like there's going to be people who can translate and speak English, uh, Spanish a little better, or I can learn some Spanish. That part is like not that bad. What's worse is like trying to work with someone who is not capable of engineering 
a problem or solving a problem and, you, you know, like not being able to logically walk through it. He's going to come out with spaghetti code that we have to pay for later on down the road. But if the guy is like just slow at communicating, like that's that's fine. That's a different that's a different thing, you know? Sure. So like a lot of these problems, uh, I, I will tell you like just really quickly that like, a lot of these questions I give, I fully expect the the um, candidate to be able to wa logically walk through these problems. Actually, um, I don't give a shit if they come up with the right solution. Like y y like the video I posted today, of uh, reacting to that Amazon interview, I would have only right. been borderline on that guy, even though he came up with even if like the first problem and solution that he came up with was absolutely flawless, which it was. I would have been borderline on passing him because it's like he didn't logically derive it. He didn't logically prove it. He just kind of seemed like he just memorized the solution. So I'm like, I mean, at least he knows what programming data structures are, but it's like, I can't pass him. And then it kind of came out in the second problem that he did. Like he wasn't thinking logically through it. So I'm like, nah, we're, we're not passing this fucking guy. Right. Okay. So when you, when you say like logically proving it, you, you mean like actually, you know, writing out the examples and going through uh you know your design yeah yeah so it's like okay. being able to, if you can walk through your design you have a bulletproof design you have easy way to communicate with the interviewer and you know what the fuck you're doing so okay and so yeah a lot of time should be spent uh during that portion right the the design and then trying to go in walking through examples right like that's where you should be spending most of your time uh, right versus just kind of like coding everything out it gets weird because at a higher level there's a lot of kinetic and understanding between interviewers and between the interview and the candidate so like an l5 level um he would have immediately like skipped a lot of steps he would have like and been able to effectively communicate that without making any mistakes so it'd be like okay right. well i see that we're going to need to uh create an even list and an odd list we're going to use two pointers and then we're going to build that list now, the cases that I need to be able to handle are going to be if these three cases. He would have just, like, instead of typing all this out, he would have just said it. So it's like, okay, well then, okay. Um, all I'm going to do, and then he would have said blah, 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 and then after all that, it's like, okay, that all sounds good. Um, go ahead and write it out. He would not have to walk through it, most likely. Like, if this is a very simple problem, he could just describe it and then maybe do a brief example uh, or, like, a bit of it. Like, he wouldn't walk through a full example. But the reason why I'm making you do it is because you need the practice. Right. Like, okay, literally, okay. I guarantee you a competent L5 engineer who does this in, like, 15, 20 minutes tops with a very clean solution. Okay. Um. Yeah, and uh, so, yeah, just, uh, and you can be completely honest, like, mm -hmm. so uh, if you had to level me, where would you put me at? Level negative zero? Negative five? <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. What's lower than new grad? <laughs> oh, God. Like, yeah, yeah, let's call uh, it negative L3 or some shit. Negative L3, okay. Yeah, like, literally, this is, like, uh, I know people who are straight out of school who can do much better than this. Yeah. Like, or, or even still in school, to be honest. Like, um, even the people applying for internships can be much, are much better than this. Right. No. Dang. Yeah, yeah I you, need to, you got I, need, I need work. You got a lot of work. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you this, like, um, you, you focus on this shit, um, you write your simple code, come up with simple solutions, test your goddamn code, and if you really put effort into this, you'll see a really, really big improvement after, like, a week. Mm, okay. So, and I mean, like, you, like, take this like it's a full-time job, man, like a second job outside of work. You'll become a much better engineer for it as well. Like you said at the very beginning, you said that uh, you weren't a very good engineer, um, you, you know, you got, you lost your job because of um, some other shit that went on, uh, um, but if you can actually do this, do this step logically, you will literally see a, like an improvement not just in your coding interview, but also in your career, the way you evaluate things, the way you construct uh, code, product, all that jazz. It will be so much better. Right. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions? Awesome. Um, yeah, no, that's all I have for now, but I'll definitely uh, ping you if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll answer whenever I can so on Discord, so sure okay um yeah can i actually can i download this or yeah it's gonna be on youtube so oh crap forgot about that yeah so uh, you're gonna see it don't worry like most people don't really care so <laughs> okay um awesome well yeah i mean i, I don't know if um uh, yeah i don't want to take up any more of your time so i appreciate it edbert mm -hmm. uh this was very helpful and i appreciate the the homework i'm gonna definitely do this
Mm -hmm. All right, for sure. Take care, man. All right, thanks. Talk to you later. All right, bye. -bye. All right, so that's it from him. I'll answer any questions in the chat now. Um, let me know if you have any co questions, commentary, concerns, and all that good stuff. You know, if you have, you guys like, I like when you're watching these streams. I highly recommend you do the problems alongside um, the guys. Well, all like try to try them out for yourself. See how you do, because like it, it's really hard for a lot of these people to really uh, come out here and do the um, what's it called problems and be on stream doing all this shit so it's like it's a chance for you guys to learn as well like the, a lot of the mistakes that people are making here are mistakes that anyone i think makes and are capable of making even i make them from time to time so you know um i don't think there is anything necessarily wrong with kind of just watching but i think you just get a whole lot more value out of the whole session especially if you're in chat by just actually trying this shit out yourself. And who knows, you know, maybe you'll realize that you're making the same mistake. So, yeah, for sure, man, Sinance, yeah, yeah. Did you feel like um, it also helped you as well? <laughs> yeah. So the guy was initially like, uh, was it two years of experience? Um, one year at, at each company, so he worked at two companies. Um, yeah, so he was an experienced engineer. Based on what he was telling me, the quality of his work, um, the what I saw today, he was basically new grad level junior engineer, or at at maximum, I think. Cause I I think um, the fact that uh, this is gonna be a little bit long, but essentially what I'm seeing nowadays is that there is an oversaturation at the L three L four level, and people are calling themselves senior engineers when they're in fact like barely better than a junior engineer. I see this like at Uber, I see this at Facebook, I'll, like. There are a bunch of fucking people who are labeling themselves senior engineers and shit who can barely code at an L3 level. It's fucking amazing what you see when, um, what you see at these companies and how, and you wonder how the fuck did they get hired as an L5, you know? And what you realize is that most people put so much emphasis on communicating and getting other people to do their work. And it's like, the criteria for, L for promotion in a lot of these companies is your ability to navigate corporate structure. You know? So as long as you get your work done, nobody gives a shit. Even though, if, even if your engineering skill is, like, complete trash, as long as you're producing the product, the engineering company does not give a shit. So, I guess they were able to communicate and, um, you know, leverage the people around them well enough to be able to, um, you know, get their work done. So, you know. Yeah, they passed the coding interview. You'll be surprised. You'll be surprised how many people, like, give a pass to um, other people just because they quote unquote pass the coding interview because again a lot of people think that the coding interview is like just you know spit out the right answer call it a day you know but that's not the way I judge things because again my standards are to a point where I expect people to be able to sufficiently pass these interviews any interview that they want if you're an L5 at one company you should be an L clear L5 at any other company Google included that's the way I judge my my, my thing but I think what a lot of people do is that because they ha don't have a lot of exposure to this, like, to fan companies themselves, they believe, hey, the person got the right answer. Therefore, they must be good engineers. You know, and that's not really the way things work. You, again, like I said, you'll be surprised. It's like ignorance breeds ignorance. If you're a bad engineer, you're going to think other bad engineers are, are good. But if you take the time to actually give a shit about, like, what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis... You'll understand the characteristics of bad engineers, the, or the engineers who screw your code base, the engineers who don't know what the fuck they're talking about. And then you notice them in other people you're interviewing as well. And so once you notice those uh, little ticks, those little habits, then you know what people to fucking avoid during the interview. And that's, and what habits lead to what, um, lead to what problems. And that's basically the formulation of how I'm able to identify what people are doing. You saw in that interview and that coaching session that I said, hey, because you said this and did this, you're going to make this mistake. And that all boils down to not just the fact that I've probably made those mistakes in the past as well, but I've seen other people make those mistakes as well and not correct them over and over and over again at my own fucking career. And, and when I see people like do that shit, I know what problems that occur. I know what actions they're going to take because I've seen a lot of those actions as well. And I've actually critically thought about like, okay, why did this person do the thing that they did? Not, I'm not like here to fucking bash on them. That's why I'm not naming names. But it's like, I've seen the mistakes people make. And I 
critically think about like why they make the mistakes. Is it because of something I did? Is it something could I have done something better? Could I have you know like helped them in some way? And a lot of the times it just boils down to the fact that they didn't think logically about the problem and they just want to like write the product and go home. They don't think about like what they're exactly doing. And so, you know, like all you have to do is just if you want to work with these people and you're forced to, you just limit the scope of what they have to focus on. But chances are you'd like to avoid working with these people to begin with. So So you're saying coding interviews aren't hard enough for seniors. No, I, I think coding interviews are the are hard actually. Um it just takes time to really build up the right engineering, how we say, muscle skills. But it's the logic, the way you evaluate problems. That should be the real key of these interviews. A lot of what is going on right now is that people think, again, people are associating, you get the right answer, therefore you must be a good engineer. That's the problem. It's the, it's the criteria by which we judge engineers is the problem. But this wrong, this thing is wrong, right? For them, for them and the company too. Yeah, it's wrong for the company. But from an this is from a purely engineering perspective. From a company perspective, it's not. Why? Because the company is here to make profit. It's here to build product. It's here to try and you know sell shit. You know, it, it doesn't matter if you write the cleanest, most perfect code. If you can't get your code out the window, out the door, and that's a problem with like a lot of engineers with like me too. It's like I focus on trying to make sure. I fully understand what the fuck I'm writing before I even write something. And in some cases, that's the wrong thing to do because, you know, this code might not necessarily live that long. It might not, you know, it might be retired in six months, you know, or you even, this just might be a disposable product, in which case it's not necessary to understand what the hell you're writing. And that's the case for a lot of startups, actually. They don't have a stable product yet, so they just like write code, dispose of it, write new shit again. And that's the environment a lot of these engineers come from. So. Again, I might be harping on them and their bad habits, but the fact of the matter is that just because of the nature of industry and engineering, they never build up that habit. They never had to think about, like, why isn't their code working beyond, hey, let me fix this bug and move on. So, that is, all, it's like, it's, it's a vicious cycle that feeds into itself. It's, and then once these people mistakenly get hired, what do you think they're doing? They're going to think, oh, I got hired. I'm so fucking good. I'm good enough to work in this company. Therefore, I have must be good enough to judge other people. So I'm going to judge them by the standards that I judge myself. You know, it's the Dunning-Kruger effect. Who are the interviewers, usually Senior Plus, who conduct them? Um, well, the thing is that any interviewer can conduct an interview on anyone at their level or below. That's the thing. So if you're an L3 engineer, you might be able to um, interview people at an L3 level. Um, but L4, it's like L4, you can interview at L4, L3, L5, L5, L4, L3. But the thing is that even if you do, even if you are at that title, chances are you're you're not necessarily at the engineering skill of that level. You're just able to perform at that level, which is a big difference in my mind, at least. Um, to the company's perspective, it doesn't it doesn't make a big difference because again, as long as they get the product, at the end of the day, they don't care. But for in my mind, I'm focusing on enhancing the engineering prowess of people. And so because of that, this is the way I judge things. This is the way I coach. I coach purely from an engineering perspective, um, you know, because like all this stuff about like organization, team, all that good jazz, you know, it's, that's a whole different ball game that's outside my control. And I don't focus on that. I focus on the things I can't control. So also senior at Fang does not equal senior at mid-sized company. Yeah, that, that's absolutely true because the, again, the duties and expectations are different. If you look at a senior engineer at a top tier tech company, their responsibilities and what they and what they need to do is like lead a team of engineers. But the thing is that how deeply they're able to dive and solve problems is going to be um, is going to be vastly different. Let me give you a solid example. So, for instance, if you're on a DevOps team, you're going to be the hard stop to the organization. If something is not working, like you're responsible for creating impact on essentially hundreds of engineers which means that if you are not able to handle um let's say two percent of cases that is like two that's like what five ten people that are coming to you very specifically who are fucked because you couldn't figure out their problem so you need to be able to come up with a solution that fixes every single possible fucking scenario and if you're only able to think about like oh let me solve the p80 case let me solve the p90 case and be done with it and move on 
you're not going to have that muscle memory or that uh, ability to dive deep. In fact, like the craziest thing I've seen is people actually looking at the fucking Java compiler. I, I, it's like it, it just blew my fucking mind that you're an Android engineer and you're actually looking at the way Java C code, like the, the fucking Java cl dot class files, get actually compiled into this bytecode. You know, like who the fuck actually does that on a, on a regular basis? And then in this team, it's like it's expected of you. It's like yeah, you know what? We're the hard stuff, and if people are like. Are getting fucked on jump buffing their JDK version because of something that happened in the compiler that changed. You need to fucking figure it out. So that's the thing. You need to. It's like if you can't have that muscle memory, you're at least in my book, you're not able to actually be an L5 on any level. This is at least in my book. And yet I've seen people who ask like fucking mobile engineers about their about their own tech stack, even though the tech stack is a back end. And that just blew my goddamn mind. Like how the hell are you an L5 engineer if you are asking a mobile engineer? about your own tech stack or how to write code in that. Like, I, I, I don't fucking understand, man. Hey, thanks for correcting my mindset. Currently an in internship task. I just aim to fix errors without knowing the actual thing that I'm writing out, but I'll improve on this. Uh, yeah. It's like, as an intern, your job is really to learn as much as possible, not just about the company that you're at, but the engineering as well. So find someone that you, who really gives a shit about his work, you know? Because that person is going to be a valuable contact from now till the end of fucking time. If he cares about his work, he there's a lot he can teach you, and he, the chances are he will go very far in his career. He will be promoted, he'll be very, the most valuable guy on the fucking team, and he can get you into a lot of places. And it's much easier to vouch for someone who shares the same principles that you do. Does Uber have hiring higher does Uber ha have a higher hiring bar than Amazon for new grads? Honestly, it depends on your interviewer. Um, you will be in very bad luck if you get me, though. I am an asshole. Straight up. I'm an asshole about when it comes to interviews. I straight up demand excellence and pure logic and a very, very good grasp of the engineering process. So, I honestly, that's like probably my fault. Like, I usually turn down L3 engineering um, requests, like interview requests, because of that. And because I understand like my standards, like the way I think of the way I judge is like absolutely fucking bonkers to most people. So that's like, but I would say for most people, I think um, the standards are pretty similar across industries, especially for new grad. They expect you to have a lot more um, textbook knowledge, really, because you just study this shit. Like I'm not going to be able to recite Dijkstra or Bowman Ford off the top of my head, but it's a fair game to ask a new grad because you just studied it. When you're interviewing candidates at your job, do you ever roast them or do you only apply to people you coach? It only applies to people I coach. Do you know how much trouble I would get if I called someone a shithead? Like, say, hey, you fucking suck at engineering. I would never hire you. If I, if I said that, like, actually to um, someone in the room. Do you know how, like, if fucking HR would get on my ass and fire me right there? I cannot say that to someone. I represent Uber in that case. But, you know, in my private class, I'm trying my best to help them. I represent, in my view, I represent some... Like, the, the company does say, like, I do represent Uber in some regards, like, even in my private life, even, like, right now. But right now, I'm speaking as a coding coach, as a coding interview coach. And in my view, I try focusing on being as absolutely brutally honest as humanly possible. Because that is what gets people the best results. In fact, I've gotten, like, at least, like, I think four people now into Uber with flying colors because of this. So, I mean, I mean it definitely it is controversial. And I'm sure HR wouldn't like it if I, they saw streams like these. But the fact of the matter is I'm not speaking as an Uber for the company. I'm speaking for myself. That's And I try to make that distinction very, very clear. What would you do if your interviewee was a fan of the channel, Instant Pass? No, I would honestly like say, okay, cool. But I'm not going to treat you any differently. I don't care. I'm literally going to be as harsh as possible and make sure that we hire the right people. That's my job as an interviewer, we make sure we hire the best, most qualified people, bar none. And that's based on a compromise between what I think and what Uber believes to be the best engineer. Of course, in my private practice, I focus completely on the engineering skill. And I think the way I think is the one that is most accepted as the signs of quality engineers at every single place. Because again, the goal here is to get you any offer at any place at any time. So. Are new grads expected of system design? No. Uh, at most, you would get like some um, object-oriented programming. I would never expect you to try and like tell me how to design 
a CI CD system from scratch at scale. That, that there's no fucking way you would be able to do that. Is there some other price tag for a long term coding coach? Um, there's a wait list actually for that. Um, so if you're interested in like long term coaching, um, let me actually Google. Uh, Yeah, I, I don't plan on being like a big, big social influencer. I have no intention of ever doing that. I think I just want to keep my private practice very limited. I have no intention of ever like making this my main thing. Um, and if Uber kind of tells me, don't worry, I've cleared this with Uber. They've told me to that it's chill. Um, and I've cleared with my manager. Manager's cool with it too. Um, and the fact of the matter is that actually in their view, it helps Uber because I'm training candidates to be very very fucking good you know and which means that they are more likely to pass the uber interview which means that the uber interview understands that they are hiring very really good candidates so they don't have to spend all this time hunting new candidates when one candidate fails it's very expensive to do that you know and especially how to make a bad hire but if i can turn a bad candidate into a good candidate and also turn them into a good engineer and then recommend them to uber and they get an uber offer you know shit's really really good you know um, so I, I don't disclose, I was like, I don't mind that there's like some conflict of interest. Like I would really appreciate people to apply to Uber because you know, that gets me the signing bonus too. You know, uh, you pay me for coaching and if you make it to Uber and you accept their offer, I get a bonus on top of that. So I have every incentive to make sure that everyone here, like not only does very, very well, like in any coding interview that they, they want, but also to accept an Uber offer and, you know, be, make an impact. So um, I, I personally see it from that perspective, um, and I think it, they say, see it from that perspective as well. Do you think William Lin could pass if I interviewed him? Yeah, I think so. Competitive programmers are actually very quite logical, um, and a lot of what goes on in a coding interview is not unlike like this game, Dota, where it's like purely logic. It's like, um, for instance, like if I look at the arrangement of the map right now, I can already tell... like. Hold up, let me actually look at this right now. So, you see, like, all this fucking towers are mowed down here, a uh, top lane? So, which means that the green side has all this fucking area to farm. So, what you're gonna see here is, like, once, like, they're gonna, once the red team sees that these guys are here, they're gonna clear out this jungle area and then run back over to this triangle, simply because they know, understand that this area is under green control and they want to get the fuck out of here as soon as possible. So, within, like, the next five minutes, you should see, like, this flow of movement. If, uh, if green doesn't try like taking Roshan or something. So, and the coding interview is like very much the same thing. It's like your pieces are, and moves are just the data structures and algorithms. What really is the question is how do you pick which data structure and algorithm to use? And that's what a lot of this stuff is. It's like setting yourself up to make that decision so much easier. Also time to watch everyone's past interviews and study them to prep new grad. Um, so, uh, time to watch everyone's past interviews and study them so I can prep for new grad. Um, the thing is that you don't need to watch every single one. I just make these live streams available for people and answer live questions. You can always go back and watch them. Um, but everyone makes different mistakes for the same problem. And I think that um, if you watch like at least half of the interviews that I conduct or the coaching sessions, I think you pretty much have a good idea of what it takes to pass like at, at an 80 percent rate literally just between like what you saw today and then like a few other ones where there's like a little bit of um nuance shit like where i'm not yelling at the guy to design and test his code then you pretty much already are in a good pretty good spot and i think better than most candidates out there more of those issues are there no legal or copyright issues uh not really i, I don't believe so um, again, like a lot, what I do here is like, I have to submit what I'm doing to HR, you know? Um, and they have to disclose, oh, okay, here's what I'm doing. Here, I'm not using any Uber proprietary information. All the questions that I'm using are from EPI or leak code and they can all be publicly found. Um, there, and again, in my view, I don't think that, ooh, this track's going to be like fucked here. Um, so in my view, I don't actually like disclose anything that's proprietary and I, Again, because this all this stuff is like public information. So, okay, wow. Yeah, see, see, notice like like I said here, green is under control. Green is the strong, green is strong because they control this area. 
uh, what's called the red, ran away from this area, took this fight here, and then red got wiped. It's not that hard to read these games. Because and they lost that fight because green was stronger. Oh, so that, that, that's it. And you can, you can kind of just tell that just because of the territory that they controlled here and the objectives that they've taken. Uh, it's purely logic. I didn't have to... I wasn't even paying attention to this game that much, actually. But I noticed that even though I could... I, I just read the map. And then by reading the map, I can understand what the hell is going on. Uh, just purely through logic. Uh, this guy's going to get fucked. Uh, there's no saving him. Do you face, feel most of your interviewees... Like, um... I would say so. I, I think I'll, almost 90% of them I give fail to just because like I don't like the way they um, approach the problem. I usually take similar notes um, where it's like, okay, this is the timestamp. This is like this is what he said. This is what he did. This is like, what? why are you doing this? And then I try predicting what he does. And then if my predictions end up being right, then it's like, you know, um, tough shit for him. Like if he does the incorrect thing and then he ends up fucking up, I'm like, well, he made this mistake. And obviously, this is indicative of a bigger problem. But if he like proves me wrong and he still gets and he does the right thing, you know, then it's like I'm I'm gonna forgive that, of course. You know, I give everyone a fair chance. I'm not trying to like you know dick wave here, but it's like I want to make sure that people who are we're hiring are very good engineers and can solve actual problems instead of like just writing code. What's my MMR? Uh, fifty six hundred. Like that's that's like divine four right now. I, Although I've been dropping, like, I think I dropped down to, like, 52. Yeah, yeah, I dropped down to 52, like, a few weeks ago, actually. And I haven't been playing much. I fucked up. Do you have a student who made Uber? Yeah, I got, like, three. Three or four. And then I have one more that's applying as well. But it's, like, he's applying for a European position, so I don't think that uh, I will get him to be um, my, uh, what's it called? I, I will not be interviewing him. Are the notes I take from the coaching session similar to the actual notes you take in the interviews? Yeah. I literally timed them. I have like a little timer on my computer. These are pretty similar notes that I take. And so whenever we hire people, it's like there's always a committee, right? And in the committee, your job is to present like why you should hire or not hire this person. Um, and these notes, instead of it being like general, oh, he can't did X, Y, Z, I literally have hardcore proof. Nothing subjective. Every little piece of information that this guy says or does is my reasoning for why I make the decision that I do. So it's nothing subjective. There's nothing subjective about this. I should submit the information, the evidence, and saying, hey, looking at all this shit that he said and did, this is why I'm making my decision. And very rarely gets this contested. When does Uber start the new grad questions? Um, it's that new grad positions are not very desirable in the industry in general. The reason why is because New grads in general are very high risk, low reward. Um, the reason why is because when you're a new grad, you're going to be hop, job hopping, you know? You're going to be like going from one company to another to company to another, you know? And uh, it takes a lot of time and money to be able to train these new grads to be um, a, at, a, at a good level where they can start contributing meaningfully. Senior engineers, you could get them up to code in like six months to a year, you know? But new grad, if you spend that six months to a year, they're writing mediocre code at best and fixing bugs, you know? So they're not getting a whole lot of value out of it. So the only way we hire new grads on a team is if we have a lot of grunt work that needs to be done. Like, we need you to fix some bugs. We need you to maybe write a small feature. We need you to fix this shit. So it's more of a luxury because any senior engineer can do this. Because, you know, like, if a product gets released and it's buggy, no one's going to fucking use it. So a senior engineer can fix that and write features. Whereas a junior engineer not can't do as much. So that's, that's why, like, we don't open up new grads that often just in, in, in the industry in general. You know, it's just, like, a lot of teams don't have the room for it or the luxury to do it. So that's why, like, the first job is always hard. It's like, well, we're taking a risk on this guy, train this guy, hopefully he sticks around, and hopefully he's useful. But the thing is that if you've never had a professional job before, it's like you don't have that benefit of past knowledge. So it's like we're going to start you from scratch. Do your opinions on candidates differ from opinions in that other interviews that you give to the committee? I would say, like... I'm often the contrarian voice because it's like a lot of people will find reasons to like someone and I am inherently looking for reasons to disqualify them. It's like, it's like investing, you know? Investing fundamentally is a activity that is inherently discriminatory because you're not look it's like you're not looking for reasons why it's a bad investment because then otherwise everything would be a good investment. You're looking for reasons why it's a good investment. 
because it's like you assume that hey this guy is like coming to us with hey, and he says he has all this experience but then it's like uh, and then at my point would be like okay prove to me that you are someone who has this experience and has made it meaningful you know it's like talk is cheap my uh, what i'm trying to do is make sure that you actually prove to me that you know what you're talking about and that your experience is what you say it is if it's not then it's like well what happens if we hired the wrong guy the wrong guy gets hired he just like does, he fucks off um for like six months a year and the company loses like you know twi- two times his salary during that point while he produces nothing so that's like immediately like you know a million dollars right there lost or some shit and so that's why it has to inherently be discriminatory you know if we like interview the wrong guy it's just the cost of communication few emails and then um the, the on-site interview and then eight hours of developer time so that's like what cool of three thousand dollars that the person loses you know the company loses three thousand dollars to avoid a fa- bad hire you know whereas they lose a million dollars if they hire the wrong person so that's why it's inherently discriminatory it, it has to be like we have to make sure that we're hiring the right people so that's why i take the stance of hey make sure this guy is proving to us without beyond a reasonable doubt that he knows what the fuck he's doing so doesn't sound very interesting work. I mean, yeah, like interviewing is not necessarily that interesting, but it's something that needs to be done. You know, it, ha- it has to be done with like, because we, we, like there's a lot of demand for very, very good engineers, but it's like, we need to make sure we're hiring those good engineers. And it's all part of making sure that the workplace that you're at, you know, lives to fight another day. So, okay, I haven't been paying attention to this game. Let's see what's happening. 26 net worth. Uh, this TA is falling behind, actually. TA is not... Holy shit, what has been... What's going on? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like, like, notice, like, green is controlling this fucking map. They're winning 27 to 14. I think it's just been snowballing since they just keep losing fight after fight. This TA is not that farmed. I think this is a carry TA. Yeah, yeah, this should be a carry TA. She should be having, like, at least, like, 20,000 net worth here, actually. Um, but uh, she's only sitting at 16. At least, like, tw- like, she should be... F- what? It's, uh... What's six? What's like seven hundred, eight hundred GPM? Like, yeah. If you're a TA, carry TA, you should be at like six hundred like GPM right now. So you should be at like eighteen thousand. You should be tied with this Latrac. She's way too under farm. She's down like a full item. But it's like I don't think she can do anything here. Actually, they're they're not really good like jump or shit. Like the idea would be to blow up the lion or our um bushwhack, but you had to jump past the fucking Latrac and Wraith King. Like, look, she, she's trying to jump on the back line right now because the supports aren't there. So the only one he can go on is the Pango and then, like, run away with the BKB. But then, like, Lashrak can start cleaning shit up. Like, this Lashrak has a Shroud and then, like, I think BKB, you'll see. Yeah, he's not dying anytime soon. That's why he's the highest net worth on the map. He, he's, like, he, he just doesn't die in this matchup. Oh, he's got Bloodstone. He doesn't have BKB. All right. Okay, yeah, sure, sure. Why not Bloodstone? Um, yeah. I was... I think Kaya Sanj is actually better here, but you know, whatever. I'm thinking that maybe he believes that his allies can control the enemy for them, for him to like run and kill shit. Yeah, see, TA is going for the lion. Boom. Um, tries to pull off some sneaky ass play, but then now he's in trouble. Uh, eh, no. Okay, TA's has gotta go back to fountain. She can't engage like this. She cannot engage like this, dude. This track. Okay, this track might actually die. Holy fuck. Is he not dying? The fuck? But the ball's on this fucking guy. I guess he knows coils down. Jesus. Have you considered working in high frequency trading industry since they pay more? Um, I did. Uh, but I just ended up figuring out, you know what? I, I kind of like working for software engineering, you know? I But I don't like... It, it's like money's not the thing that motivates me, to be honest. So it's like, even if you threw an extra million dollars at my face, I'm just like, I don't give a fuck. Like, I just kind of trade on my own time and invest on my own time. And I kind of want to keep it that way because it's just like the problem is that um, investing is a whole different ball game. I think it's it's just like there's just too much math shit involved. Have you ever seen like CAPM and modern portfolio theory? A lot of it's just like a linear linear optimizations and equations. But it's like for me, it's just like that's not interesting to me. Uh, I, I don't I don't I just it's not something I want to do. High frequency trading is like it's just not my cup of tea, man. I like being a like, value investor to be honest. I like being right in the long run because high frequency traders like you should have to be right within like the next 30 minutes to make trades you know you have to be right within the next two weeks but the thing is that you constantly have to be right you have to keep changing your knowledge out and the long-term fundamentals 
tend to not really work out. And that's not something I really focus on. In fact, the only reason I'm able to really do this coaching, coding interview coaching is because I understand what the long-term value is for these principles of engineering. And that's what that's what I weave into here. And I can prove that it works because of my client's results. Now, imagine if the coding interview changed every two weeks. You know, I'd have to be trying to prove, okay, what works consistently, what doesn't work. Instead of trying to say what is likely to work 50% of the time. That's, that's, not, that's not what I am here to do, you know. And it's not something I'm very good at. The hiring bar is higher for high-frequency trading firms. You know what? I will go ahead and do some interviews with some high-frequency trading firms. Let's see. I'd be very curious. Instead of playing Fang Bingo, let's play like like you know like Citadel, Jane Street, Two Sigma, and like Bingo. I I I'd be curious to see like what the how to do those interviews. Actually, that might be interesting content. Would you feel a candidate if they did great on the initial question but not so well on the follow ups? I'd be lukewarm because um, usually the initial question is like super easy and they should be able to do it very logically. The follow up is going to be harder, and most likely they're not going to even code code it. You know. But chances are, is if they can get the right idea and design, then I will be in a pretty good mood. And I'm like, okay, well, he didn't solve, he didn't write the code for it, but at least he got the right idea. So it's like, okay, why not pass him? Because he's got the right logic behind him. So, And GG, green one. Wow, we could have seen that coming. Have you thought about changing your concentration, for example, from mobile to web? Nah, like I said, I'd, write, I'd rather be very, very good at one thing. Um, and eventually all these different tech stacks converge. So it's like, um, if you're a mobile engineer, eventually you'll reach a point where you want to like go beyond the Android SDK and actually start looking at what developers need to write very, very, write code very, very quickly on Android. And that's kind of the position I'm at. It's like, I'm looking at DevOps. So I'm looking at CICD stuff. I'm looking at like uh, what goes on underneath the hood with like Kotlin, class code, byte code, um, how that shit all gets compiled. How does interoperability work? How does Android support all these language features? This is the side of stuff that I'm working with, and I just find that shit fascinating beyond all hell. So I never thought about changing from mobile to, de to web. It just wasn't my thing, and I just don't want to have to learn all these things all over again, you know? Why, why do I need to? So let's see. Um, Pango, Lion, Willow, Ursa versus a Mars, Bloodseeker, Nyx. Gank heavy versus control heavy. Um... I'm going to bet that Puck Champ picks, his, picks like BKB carries, actually. It's, Ursa's a problem. Mm, I don't think Storm Spirit's going to be in the pool for Puck Champ because it's just like the control is a little bit much and the Willow can be get very, very annoying. Um, also, they kind of lack some objective taking. Lashrak got banned, so I, I don't know what the, heal pool, the hero pool is. Oh, there's Lena. Okay. So they have a way to kite the Ursa and deal with him. And Lena carries a BKB as well. So, and I think this Bloodseeker is going to be a carry, so they need to pick their position forward in order to set all lanes up for success. So they have a way of blowing up people up. They have control. They have ways of dealing with things. I, th I think that uh, Puck Champion's got a pretty good draft right now, but the question is whether or not they can enable this Ursa to go, go ham. So the Puck Champ, what they're going to do is probably pick someone, pick a position forward that shuts, down the, that shuts the Ursa down. So, okay, Enigma, Enigma sets up for the Ursa, that's fine. And then they ban the Hoodwink. Hoodwink controls the Ursa pretty well, actually. So he can dodge all the shit that's get thrown at him and snipe the Ursa from long range. Sure, why not? So then Puck Champ, uh, what's good here? What's good here? What's good here? I feel like they need some like repositioning. Like, be able to pull the um, Negma Gaming out from their position. So if Earth Spirit was meta, I would have recommended that. But uh, I actually don't know. And then name a game. They want something to enable the Ursa and to would back maybe have Magnus actually. Magnus works really well here. Uh, I think for Enigma, it's like it fills the farming role. It initiates for the Ursa. It enables the Ursa and Pango, and it and it punches through BKB and it fucks the um, Bloodseeker up actually quite hard. So I, I think it's gonna be a Magnus pick. Then the Puck Champ needs to pick something that un picks a four. So. I don't, I don't, I'm not very good at 4, so I'll, I I need to see. Uh, will you take on Android apps on Windows 11? Is it good Flutter or React Native? I don't play with React Native. Actually, everyone's kind of moved from React Native. And it's like... The problem with React Native is that you're basically maintaining two separate code bases. And not to mention that you also need to maintain an artifactory for it as well and make sure that it's just some extra piece, extra dependency that you need to be able to handle. 
And it's only really good at the very beginning if you've decided that your core architecture is built off of React Native because then it's cross-compatibility. But then as you get to higher and higher, um, what's it called? Um, distribution? The tail end distribution is what kills you. So the P99 case is not good enough. You have to go 99.9 .9, and then React, React Native serves as an extra layer between that in or and kind of prevents you from making some more optimizations. So it ends up being in this really weird state where React Native isn't it, like really that widely used in top tier tech companies that have wide distributions for their apps. So I don't believe I have never taken the time to learn Flutter or React Native. I'm is it bad if I'm going to grad but then going to mastering one? I'm learning a bunch of random technologies and bouncing between web and mobile. Um, I think it's cool to dip your toes in, especially when you're early, to find something that you like. But once you pick something, you stick with it. That's it. You know, maybe you don't you don't have to you don't have to be falling in love with the very first thing that you find. You know, just pick something that is very very how to say that you're gonna stick with, and you're gonna like. Oh, I just realized I bit it. Pick with something that you're gonna stick with, and that you can do for a very long time. That's it. But you just have to like you know you just have to like your work. You don't have to love absolutely love it, but you know what I mean. I'd be very curious to see how you would do an interview in a high frequency firm as a software engineer. I think you do pretty well, but companies like have tremendously high hiring bars, so anything could happen. I agree. I think that would be an interesting move to make, but I would not. I mean, I could do it for shits and giggles, but it's like um, I kind of have I kind of have my hands full with my full time clients right now. So, what about behavioral interviews? Do you conduct them, and do they weigh heavier than the technical interview? I would say no. I would say that the behavioral interview is only ten percent, and it's entirely and it's discriminatory as well. It's like if you can code but you're a complete ass, we're not gonna hire you. So, it's like behavioral interview just is more like a sanity check. Don't be an asshole, and you're gonna pass that. That that's it. Mm, all right. So I think I've talked long enough. Um, I'll save the questions for another day. Thanks. Thank you everyone for watching. Hope you enjoyed the stream. Hope you learned a lot. Um, I will ping you guys, let you know if uh, we do another stream next week. In the meantime, follow me at eChanTech, join the Discord, uh, follow me on Instagram, all that good shit. Um, feel free to send me a message if you want coaching help or career help. And, you know, until next time. So, I'm turning off the stream. Later, y'all.